any place in America, Seattle, Washington, and Husky Stadium on a football Saturday in September. What could be better? And it gives tailgating a whole different name. No Winnebago's here. They'd sink. Pete, it's great <laughs> to be up here in Seattle and, uh, of course, a whole new meeting to the game up here. Well, it's a fantastic place to be right here, and it's very unique, sailing the seven seas of competition and character-building college football action. I can't wait. We aren't in Kansas anymore. I know this is more your style. No, you can do the game. I'm going to sit here on the boat and enjoy this. Well, I think you should. In fact, I'll tell you what. Have another hors d'oeuvre. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Is that ranch? Nice. We should have a good oh, time Beautiful. Today, huh? How are we getting home? <laughs> Imagine a more beautiful setting this time of year than the city of Seattle, Washington, on a day like this. Husky Stadium, once again, should be sold out to watch the hometown dogs take on the visitors from Provo, Utah, the BYU Cougars. This is Pac-10 College Football Saturday. Well, the Huskies arriving as they normally do by bus coming over from the hotel. Ty Willingham, pretty serious guy at all times, and he's a man who's been under siege. Is it salt water or fresh water? It doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be looking through a face mask by the time these guys get into the stadium. Ty Willingham has been under siege, Barry. This is a guy that expects success. He expected his team to play better last week in a loss at Oregon. We were there. He has to win this game against BYU because these people need a victory in Seattle. There's Max Hall. He's standing in the way. That's a quarterback for BYU. Really efficient guy. Almost 500 yards last week. And of course, Jake Locker, the quarterback for the University of Washington. The only hope for the people of Seattle. He is the most athletic guy on the field, and he's going to have to run wild today if the Huskies want a victory. Well, there's no question about it. It's an important game, really, for a couple of reasons. One, of course, the dogs need to get things reversed because it's not getting any easier for them. they got to go down to Oklahoma and play next week. So this game, that much more important. BYU brings the longest winning streak in America into Husky Stadium. They've won their last 11, but they're 0-9 on the road, non-conference. After the break, we'll take it to our college football studios. All right, College Football Saturday presented by Acura Rolling On. Michael Lee's DeMarco Farr. One week before their showdown with top-ranked USC, number three Ohio State had to face Ohio minus Beanie Wells. Yeah, Solich has them rolling in Ohio, though. Didn't expect this one to be a walkover, even with Beanie Wells on the sidelines. Ray Small stepping up on the punt returns. One thing you have to do as a punt returner is make the first guy miss and then don't get caught by the punter. Ray Small doing a great job. 69-yard touchdown for the Buckeyes. It was a struggle, but Ohio State wins at 26-14 was the final. Up next, it is Jake Locker, one of the most athletic players in all of college football. He can run it to Marco. He can throw it. Yes, he can throw it, throw it very well, but you have to give him time. He was sacked last week three times by the Oregon Ducks, only threw for 106 yards. That's got to get better, only ran for 57. He's got to be the bionic man today if they're going to beat BYU. If they have a chance to beat BYU, it's going to be by Locker's legs and his own. It was not a good second half for the Huskies. How do they respond in this game? You know what? Just start hitting people. You know, it's all about Tyrone Willingham. We're tired of hearing about when he's going to get fired, when, he, when they're going to get a new coach. Look, it's all on the players today. Step up. Purple and gold. Go out there and knock the tar out of BYU. Everything will take care of itself. College Football Saturday is presented by Acura. Acura, advance. And brought to you in part by freecreditreport.com. Do you know your credit score? You can find out right now, instantly and online at freecreditreport.com. And by Pizza Hut. It's true, now restaurant quality Tuscany pastas delivered to you by Pizza Hut. And we welcome you back. Here come the Washington Huskies before the home fans here at Husky Stadium. They got the fans on their side now. But I'll tell you what, probably a pretty good idea for these Huskies to get on the gas early and keep the fans on their side. Lake Washington, pretty quiet place right now. Everybody's off the boats and in the stadium. And it gives us an opportunity right now to be the third member of our broadcast team. Former USC All-American wide receiver, John Jackson. JJ, where are you? Oh, Barry, I'm down here in the dog pack, and I can guarantee it's going to get crazy today. Now, despite 
Washington not having a winning season over the last three years, the support for the fans continues to be at an extremely high level. One thing that comes with support, though, is high expectations, and that's exactly what these fans expect from this team today. The one thing I can tell you is that BYU has not, had, has not won a non-conference road game in the last nine attempts on the road. So while I'm down here in the dog pack, this crowd is going to be sizzling and going crazy, hoping to make that streak at number 10. Barry, I'm down here. It's going crazy. I don't know what else to say, but back to you. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll say. Did you notice there's not one man in that group around him? Well, certainly not. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to stand next to J.J. Kid Dynamite. I mean, they look bad. And we're talking about one of the great receivers in the history of the University of Southern California and my hero growing up as a young man. It's great to have him with us this week. Bronco Mendenhall, the head coach at Brigham Young, and what a job. He has done in his fourth year here. You can see 29 up and nine down. They lost their first two last year. Went on to sweep from that point on. Ty Willingham, on the other hand, as we've said, sharks are circling around Ty. Ty very good humored about it. He said, I don't go in the water. He said, now I'm not so sure I even want to go on land. With Oklahoma coming into Husky Stadium next week, right here, the Sooners will be running out of that tunnel a week from today. So Ty really needs his victory if they want to go into that bye week before their Pac-10 season with some good feelings because that Oklahoma game is going to be tough. This game versus the Cougars is going to be very tough. BYU is a very good football team. Both teams feel first possession very important, and the Cougars will have that first possession. This is Chambers to the 15, little gap to the 20, and then stood straight up as he gets to the 24-yard line by Paul Homer. Homer for the last couple of years, very good on special teams for the Washington Huskies. 22-yard return, and we're underway. The Cougs will start at the 24-yard line. Max Hall, there's his numbers from last week. Hard to improve upon that. Well, they really stacked the box to stop the tailback, Harvey Uta. He is a fantastic back, really a one-stop shop. He does it all. And Max Hall was dared to throw by Northern Iowa, and he did just that, almost 500 yards. They start with two tight ends now and two big backs around Hall. And the give this time is to Uda, and Uda is going to get about seven across the 30-yard line. He is a load. Let's take a look at the BYU offense. Presented by Acura, their offensive line, very experienced. All seniors, but for the one freshman. We talk about Harvey Unga, 245 pounds. Fui Bakapuna alongside him, also at 245. These two guys are low. They're alone in the backfield. Most people expect BYU from the old whack days just to drop back and throw it 60, 70 times a game if they can. Not with this guy, Unga. This guy can run downhill in a hurry, and he can catch a run. Second down and three. They go out of the gun again. Different look this time, too, with three wideouts. Short drop, all throws. Easy catch made by Colley and a first down. Out of bounds, short of the 40-yard line. Quentin Richardson on the stop for the Huskies. And that's what the Cougars do to them. Well, they're not going to be like Oregon in that they play really, really fast, but they play fast enough to get you off kilter. Daniel Teonesheim will have his hands full, no question about it, as will all three linebackers. And the secondary. You can see two seniors and a junior in the secondary, along with a freshman for the Washington Huskies, that freshman, Quentin Richardson. First down, right out to 41. Hall will put it up again, has all day, throws underneath, catch made by Unga. Unga's across midfield to the 47-yard line, another first down. Darren Harris on the stop, and they say Unga might be more dangerous as a receiver. Well, we said he's a one-stop shop. That's 44 receptions last year. There you see him out there. Looks like he's going to go to the flat, kind of slow plays it, and then comes across the middle, reading the defense, reading that zone for Max Hall. And Max Hall delivers a great ball to his back. You always want to have a ball delivered to a tailback, one foot in front of the numbers, so the guy can get it with a running start. And that's exactly what Uma did there. They go out of the gun again. They won't always go out of the gun. They will run out of the eye formation sometime. First down, they mark it just inside the 48-yard line. Give us to Uma once again. He gets it down inside the 45 to about the 44, and they're getting a pretty good push up front. It looks like BYU watched a lot of tape last week. Oregon played fast and got this inexperienced defense from UW off kilter, and that's exactly what BYU is doing right now, and they are getting a good push, especially the fullback, Fui Bakapuna there, leading Uma through the hole. Well, Bakapuna at 245, Uma at 245. 
big backfield. That's all. When we talked to him yesterday, they said that that gives me a pretty good feeling knowing I got those two guys. Now he only has one of them, and they're in motion this time comes Collins. All straight back, steps up, throws over the middle, throws into traffic intended for Dennis Pita, and it's knocked away by Josh Gage. Pita had 11 catches last week. Last week, Northern Iowa loaded the box, tried to take the run away, and that allowed Peter to run loose. Not this time. Well, it didn't look like Hall saw Josh Gage just kind of sitting back there at outside linebacker in the zone. He came in and knocked it down quickly. Looks like there's a flag down. So this will back the Cougs up just across midfield. It'll be second down. Slot, double slot actually. They line Pete up in the slot to the right side, the short side of the field. Ball steps up, throws, catch is made this time by Austin Collie. And that'll get about five. The 44 yard line, it'll be third down. Coogs last week against Northern Iowa, very effective in third down situations. They were seven of 11. Huskies come with a nickel defense here on third down. Especially when you have a back like Umra. This guy averages 15 yards per catch. You can really deliver him on third down. He's a one-stop shop again. He's like Dave Maggett and Brandon Johnson. He does it all. Well, they broke the Mountain West Conference freshman rushing record last year, 1,227 yards. And he's picked right up where he left off. Bakapuna and Umra in the backfield with Hall. Low snap, but Hall digs it off his heels and then throws, and a great catch made by Peter for the first down at the 34 yard line. Not an easy catch. Peter had, had to leave his feet and took a shot. Well, he's certainly used to the workload so far this season. In the young season, in that first game versus Northern Iowa, 11 receptions for 213 yards. Unga was underneath in the flat, and then Peter over the top. And a nice throw and a good catch, Tripper Johnson on the cover. This time they go quickly, and the give is to Pita, and Pita will pick up about six or seven on first down. And P, when you get four, five, six yards on first down, that makes the whole offense a little bit easier. Especially this BYU offense, which works off short passing. They look at Texas Tech pretty deeply. They like that short passing game that they run there. And with a back like Unga and a guy like Pita that can catch the ball and go in a hurry, just really catching and turning, they've got the Washington D on their heels right now. Pita leaves now, and Andrew George lines up in the slot to the right side. Dr. Puna and Unga in the backfield with Hall. Now they send Unga in motion. And I don't see anybody covering him. And this time a bad snap. And getting on it is Dr. Puna, but that's going to be a loss of about six. The last three plays, two bad snaps. That one really bad for Max Hall. Center Dallas Reynolds, not used to doing that type of thing. This is an all-Mountain West performer. Just off the mark. Good job by Bakapuna getting on it. Don't try to pick it up. Don't try to be a hero. Billy, don't be a hero. Just fall on it. Live to fight another day. Which they did. Ball back now at the 38-yard line. And they need 15. All straight back, four-man rush. Hall rolls out, steps up, buys time, throws deep. Collie wide open, makes the catch. Touchdown, Cougars! Perfect throw by Max Hall right between Quentin Richardson, Nate Williams, the safety, very late coming over. Looked like Williams had a chance to pick it. But that ball perfectly placed by Hall. Look at these fundamentals. First with the pump fake, then he sets his feet, delivers that ball a little late getting to Colley, but still a touchdown. 38 yards for the score and a pretty impressive first drive. We talked about wow. how important first drives are to both these teams. BYU says, Max Hall told us yesterday, it sets the tone. Well, if so, they've set the tone. The try for point is up and good by Mitch Payne. 9.38 remaining here in the first period. Huskies haven't had the ball yet, and they trail 7 to nothing. We're coming back. 
Well, BYU with a very impressive scoring drive, seven to nothing. They lead it. The dogs have not yet had the football. Eight plays, 76 yards. It took them five minutes and 22 seconds. That's what they do. They said we're first down team. We're not necessarily a big play team. We'll take a shot down the field. He says that was Max Hall telling us that. But he says that's not our bread and butter. Well, the bread and butter is consistency, and Hall was six for six for 80 yards and a touchdown on that first drive, and they did go for the home run shot to Colley, and they hit it. Hitta, Unger, and Colley. Very effective, not to mention Hall, who was six of six on that drive. This is going to be Polk, Jordan Polk, at about the three-yard line, and he is crushed as he got to the 20, fell forward to about the 24. So Jake Locker for the first time today, and uh, let's see if Jake and the Huskies have an answer. Jake had a tough game against Dorgan, took a lot of shots. Took a lot of shots. We thought he took a shot to the sternum that hurt him, but apparently that was not the case. Took some bad shots to his legs, really under siege the entire game. But he says he feels better this week. He's been bothered by a hamstring, but they're having less wrapping on it under those pants, and he says he's feeling good. We'll see how fast he looks. Husky start with two wides, two tights, and a single setback. Locker will throw on first down. Throws over the middle into coverage. And a good job defensively by Sean Doman. And the crowd already starting to be a little bit restless here in Seattle. Here are the Acura lineups of the Washington Huskies. Jordan White, first year, a senior with Garcia, a senior. Offensive line is the key to this team, and you can see a ton of freshmen at the skill positions, along with Jake Locker. Locker himself just a sophomore. Three wide outs this time on second and ten. And in motion comes Middleton. And the pitch to Pope. And Pope cuts back and we'll get a couple. That's important though. That's very important for Washington to get Chris Polk, the true freshman, starting his first game last week at Austin Stadium. He's got to get going. Here's the way BYU lines up defensively. It was Jorgensen who made the play on that last play. Small, even though he's a down lineman. Secondary talented all the way across the board for BYU. Might not be able to make the case that there are a lot of stars in this BYU secondary, but they're guys who play their positions well. They play together well, and that's the key to this team's entire success. So third down now and long, a familiar position for Jake Locker. Back to throw, steps up, going deep, got a man, and overthrew him. He had Jermaine Kearse and overthrew him at about the 25-yard line. You saw some of the speed of Washington there. They're going to be more athletic than that BYU defense. And Locker, this is something that plagued him last year. Not great passing percentage. Only 12 for 28 last week at Autzen Stadium. And once again, misses a deep ball. It's hard because he's such a physical player. And then he gets back there, and he's trying to relax and throw that deep ball. And oftentimes, he misses. That is a part of Locker's game that's going to have to improve. Austin Collie is going to be the deep man to receive this punt. It's a high, twisting kick. Fair catch called by Collin. And he didn't quite make it, but he does get on top of the ball at the 32-yard line. 41-yard punt, no return. And the Cougars will start at the 32-yard line. We'll jump off the track. Eight minutes, 28 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter. It's a 7-0 ball game. Cougars with the ball and the lead. Welcome back, 7-0 ball game. BYU with the ball and the lead. They'll start this time at the 33-yard line. Larry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis alongside. John Jackson out amongst the maddening crowd. And Max Hall will try to do what he did the first time. Six of six, about as good as you can be. What are you, Thomas Hardy? <laughs> away from the maddening crowd. crowd. I like that. You know, I try to add this literal touch, you know? The pastoral life. <laughs> Out of the gun on first down, play fake. Hall going to go up, and he's going deep for Colley. And Colley actually turned into a defender that time, knocked the ball away from Quentin Richardson. Good job by Colley. BYU trying to go deep again. You know, I'm a man of many hats, Barry. And every week, we try to put the hats off to somebody. This week, it's got to be hats off to this BYU offense. They do have legitimate stars all over the place, starting with Harvey Unga. Really gets it going. Max Hall, we talked about his experience and his efficiency. Started out his career at Arizona State. And then Dennis Pitta, the great tight end with the big game last week. All these guys stepping up big early in this football game. Max Hall, prior to the game at UCLA last year, had not played football in anger in four years. 
give this time known and that time the Huskies have it surrounded. He was a redshirt freshman at ASU. Then he went off on a two year mission. Then he came back to BYU and redshirted again. Or had to sit out the transfer year, I beg your pardon. So it was four years between starts from a senior in high school until last year. And an all academic guy, other BYU quarterbacks, he kind of reminds me of McMahon, Steve Young, Detmer, Steve Sarkeesian in his stature. He looks more like a college baseball player than he does a football player, especially a quarterback. Only about six feet tall. Third down and eight, but a real leader kind of guy. Very vocal out there. Back proper men that always try to get him to calm down a little bit. This time he gets some pressure. He steps up. He's got the whole field. Throws back across the grain, knocked away. Might have been able to make that first down. Reed wants a flag. Lesvin Forrester, who did have a good game against Oregon, picking up where he left off. Forrester doing a good job getting right through Reed's body and knocking that ball away. That was a giant series there for the Husky defense. They needed a three and out. They needed some confidence. They needed some good things to happen. They got real solid against Unga on second down and knocked the ball away on first and third. Now Locker and the offense has got to respond. Deep man, as you see, is DeAndre Goodwin, the punter, C.J. Santiago. The Huskies came after that one and did force a short kick. Does take a bit of a BYU bounce angle for the sideline. They'll go out of bounds at the 33-yard line, but pretty good place to start for the Washington Huskies. Only a 32-yard punt from Santiago. Well, tonight our college football Saturday doubleheader presented by Suzuki will continue. It'll be Louisiana Tech looking to pull off a second straight upset as they battle 12th ranked Kansas coverage beginning at 7 o'clock Eastern for Pacific. Of course, it's in high definition. I love to see Mangino stride that sideline. Beautiful what the Jayhawks are doing. Huskies. Quick toss this time to DeAndre Goodwin. Does slip the first man, gets it ahead to a first down across the 44 yard line. Howard missed the tackle and a great job by DeAndre Goodwin. First first down of the ball game for the Huskies. This is exactly what Washington needs. They need athletic plays made on the field from somebody other than Jake Locker. We saw DeAndre Goodwin play pretty well last week against Oregon. Eight receptions for 67 yards. He's getting out early and expressing himself. Making something happen, getting yards, making somebody miss. Somebody's got to do it other than Locker for the Huskies, or they're going to have a long season. For a first out at the 45 yard line. Four wideouts now for the Huskies in an empty backfield. Locker straight back, four man rush. Locker has to unload, does, gets to the good one. Midfield 45, 40 to the 35, to the 30 yard line, and out of bounds. Great job by Locker that time on a man in his face. Matt Bauman was coming. Well, they go with an empty backfield. And Matt Bauman was coming after Goodwin. There's no question about it. Goodwin just runs away from him. Bauman, a 230-pound linebacker. DeAndre Goodwin, only 175-pound wide receiver. Truly a mismatch there. Locker recognizes it. They recognize man coverage against the linebacker. And they exploit their athleticism there. That's what Washington's got to do, and now they've got it going. And to give this time to Polk on reverse, and Polk can't get it going really. Got about three for the 27 yard line. David Tafuna on the tackle for BYU. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. At home. Two, three, four. It's all about the O. And you could be at home with the O. Too. With the O, absolutely. It's all about the O. The O is what we're talking about. Exactly. And not the organ O. No, no, no. no this, this is your overstreet O. All the, all the employees there have it on the sides of their helmets. <laughs> With this time to Polk, and Polk picking his way across the 25. About the 23-yard line, going to be about three yards short. This is a true freshman back that Ty Willingham really loves. Chris Polk can do some really good things. That being said, he's got to be a little less cautious when he runs the ball. That's Tia LaVea on the tackle, telling Fowler coming up. He's got to lower his head. He's a freshman, and he doesn't want to make any mistakes for his football team. He, he's got the ball in both arms. 
He's really trying to pick his way, like you said, Barry. He's got to just let it rip. He's got to be athletic out there and try to get some yards for this offense. Third down and three. Blocker straight back. Rush comes over the middle. Catch made by Middleton. First down inside the 15-yard line. Now, Middleton has been a very happy surprise for Ty Willingham and the Huskies. Just a freshman. Showed up in Eugene. Well, there's Middleton right there, just sitting down over the middle, and then he finds a little bit of a space, gets away from the linebackers. Right now, these BYU linebackers cannot cover Washington athletes one-on-one, -on -one. and Kavario Middleton is by far the best true freshman performing right now for the University of Washington. Had some good catches, and after he catches the ball, turns and runs. Locker again on a swing pass to Polk, and Polk avoids the first man, but the rest of the Cougars converge on him quickly, and again, a little bit tentative. They're trying to get Polk going right now. He had a great camp and a great spring. He's one of those early entry guys. Chris Polk is a guy that committed early to USC and then saw that USC had 12 starting tailbacks listed and said, I think I'll go to Washington and yeah, start as idea. a true freshman. But he's gotten what he's wished for. He's starting as a true freshman for a Pac-10 team. However, just like you said, very tentative right now running the football. They are trying to get him going, trying to get him comfortable. But right now, he is not taking on tacklers the way he should and the way he can. This time, five receivers, an empty backfield. There's Polk right there. Second down and 10. Locker has time right up the middle to the 10, to the 5, trying to get to the outside. Touchdown, Huskies! And a big block from the freshman, Cavario Middleton, peeling back on the Cougar defenders, and that's the Jake Locker that we've seen. But not all the athletic plays on that drive had to come from Jake Locker. He didn't have to run them all the way down the football field. Just at the end, there you see the gap open up. He sees it perfectly, and that is something you don't want to see. Jake Locker running right downhill at you, makes a nice cut because he's smart, gets a great block from Middleton, and takes it into the end. And he was saying he's felt better this week than he has since the first week of fall camp when he tweaked the hammy a little bit. And by his own admission, he's not been quite himself. Well, he sure looked at there. 14-yard touchdown run for Locker with the point after. We're tied at seven. We're coming back. Well, Jake Locker, very impressive on that last drive. Four of four for 45 yards, finishing with a 14-yard touchdown run. So kind of a reversal of roles. BYU had a touchdown, then went three and out. You got went three and out, and came back at a touchdown. Ballman kicks this one away, short kick. It's going to be Chambers at the 10-yard line. And he will get it back to the 25, no more than that. And that's where the Cougars will begin things. Let's take a look right now at our U.S. Bank Pac-10 Conference Players of the Week. Mark Sanchez, what a game he had at Virginia for USC. Osaisai of Stanford, a career-high 11 tackles and a win over Oregon State. Kai Forbath of UCLA, what a win that was for the Bruins. They really showed something, and BYU is going to have to play the Bruins next week in Provo. But the Bruins really showed something starting out the new Heisel era. They still have a lot of personnel issues, and they had some injuries in that game. But they're going to play fast, they're going to play smart, and they're going to play spirited football under Rick Neuheisel, Norm Chow, and D. Wayne Walker. I'm sure Rick and Norm are watching this game right now because they get these BYU Cougars next week, and that's going to be a first down for Unga, but a flag. Came in late. And we will wait figure this one out. I'm going to say hold. I would say that's a good guess. <laughs> Holding offense number three, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. That's Larry Farina, the referee today. Well, they got the wide receiver, Michael Reed, and <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's, that's a hold. A hold. <laughs> He's got to hold of Darren Aaron. That's a mugging. It's more like an embrace. It's kind of like when we see each other every yeah, week. Yeah, that's true. That's good. A lot of love in the booth. We can get 15 yards for that. <laughs> 10. So it's first down at 12. Ball out of the gun once again. Husky show blitz off the edge. And the throw this time is to Pitta, and Pitta's going to get ahead for a first down across the 35. Darren Harris going for a ride. Pitta strong. 
at 6'5", 250 pounds, coming off a career game last week. About 11 balls for 213 yards. That's his third catch today. Hit his father, linebacker at Cal in the 60s. He's a guy that they wanted at Yale, they wanted at Dartmouth. Strong guy. Took his mission in the Dominican Republic. 71% of this BYU Cougar football team has been on a mission. 32 dudes, Mary. Two tight ends now, and again, the Huskies show blitz. And now I think they got somebody to move. Might have been Travis Bright, we'll see. That's what it looked like, Travis Bright, the guard. Dead ball, false start. Number 76, offense, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. They gave it to Ray Finga. A little bit of flinching down there. There it is there, you see the flinch from Fanga. Just started his steps a little bit early. Looked like the Cougars had a pass called there. Play fake this time, and Hall gonna go up again. Throws a tough out, it's a tough pass to throw. Reed makes the catch. And he'll be knocked out of bounds to the 40 yard line. That's a true sign of a quarterback, skill one. That's what you call the big boy out. He's almost on the opposite hash. Those hashes are very wide in college football. That's why the spread offense has worked so well because of all the space out there, but it's also a tough throw to make. Hall really gets behind his body, gets his body behind his arm, and delivers that football. Pretty good tackle by Mesfit Forrester in the open field. Eight of 10 now for Hall over the 100 yard mark. It's gonna be second down and five. Conley comes in motion. Give to Angus, straight ahead, and then they'll take the people with him. Picks up about three. Maybe a couple yards short. Trent Tuya Sissopo, very familiar name up in these parts, makes the tackle. Tuya Sissopo family out of Everett, Washington. Trent, the cousin of the former quarterback, Marcus Tuya Sissopo here. Of course, Marcus' brother also played here. And his sister. Play volleyball here. She's now an assistant volleyball coach here at UW. Imagine if one of them went to Washington State, what would happen? Oh my gosh. Drummed out of the court. <laughs> now we're going to get a little stoppage here. University of Washington. Number Huskies one of the have half. called a timeout, their first timeout of the half. Ed Donatella, new defensive coordinator for the Washington Huskies. Oh, and, uh, you know, it's trial by fire for him. He came out of the NFL. It's a very different bag. 17 years in the NFL dealing with some big time dudes, Packers and Falcons, pretty much seen them all. Guys like Buchanan playing corner for him and Deion Sanders. But now Donatel is dealing with a lot of freshmen and a lot of inexperience. But he is a scheme guy. He is a dark room guy. He is a guy that's going to figure it out personnel wise and scheme wise. And this team looks like they're in a lot better shape defensively in Husky Stadium against what is a very potent offense at BYU. They look pretty comfortable after that first drive. They've been okay, and this is a giant third down for them, obviously. Third down and about two, a little bit more than two, but first count. This is where you like the idea of having a 245-pound running back. Kind of skips into the hole, but in a violent way, people just kind of fall off. It reminds me of Deshaun Foster a little bit in that way. A little bit bigger, though, of course. Yeah. And Hall's going to throw, does so. Reed makes the catch, first down into Washington territory at the 47 yard line. Just pitch and catch. Well, that's a big time throw once again by Max Hall. That's a confident throw you have to make on third and short, running that out. Michael Reed takes a nice cut. Forrester could have been a little bit more physical there, but comes up with the tackle. Nice play. There's the catch again with Forrester hanging on him. That's just good football. Reed, a fifth-year senior, been in the program for all of Bronco Mendenhall's run. Play fake for Hall. Blitz comes, throw underneath, and a great play that time by Darian Jones. Were Jones not there, that play might still be going. Darian Jones read it perfectly. Six foot two, 245 pound junior out of Linwood, California. And he's down after making that hit. But what a great read from screen 
for Darian Jones. Well, they came with a blitz off the corner. Mesfin Forrester was coming hard. Hall did a nice job. Probably had to unload the ball a little bit earlier than he would have liked to. But a great play by Jones to break up what could have been a big play for the Cougars. Tied at seven, end of the first quarter. We're coming back. We welcome you back. Pac-10 College Football Saturday. The Cougars and the Huskies tied at seven as we begin the second quarter. Been a well-played game so far on both sides of the ball. As we went away, Darian Jones was injured for the Washington Huskies. He's been replaced by Kalani Aldrich. Second down and 12 now for the BYU Cougars just across midfield as we start. The second quarter, tied at seven. Collie comes in motion. Ball out of the gun again, long count. Drops the ball, picks it up. Now he throws, caught by Unga. First down. I beg your pardon, short of the first down, but at the 44 yard line, a gain of about six. Foster made the tackle for the Huskies just before the break. A helmet to helmet clash and Darian Jones he did manage to get up from that took a couple of shots one from his own teammate and he came off he appears to be okay on the sideline so he'll still a great read out. yeah it was still a great read on the screen no question about that third down now big play third and seven for the Cougars three wide outs to the left side Husky show blitz again. They come with the blitz right up the middle. It's picked up. Hall throws too tall. Intended for Dennis Peter. Hit it. Nate Williams. Defending for the Huskies. Did a nice job on Pitt. Seemed to be some hand checking and shoulder bumping going on between Nate Williams and Pitta. Max Hall didn't like it. There's Pitta trying to get away. Both guys with their hands on each other. That's a good no call by the officials. Good defense by Nate Williams, especially if you don't see any laundry on the field. That's right. So the crew, that call could have gone either way. I would think two had the call have been made. So Santiago will come on to do the punting. DeAndre Goodman. Well, Goodman will be the deep man for the Huskies once again, standing at the 10 yard line. High twisted kick, short kick. Going to go out about short of the 20 yard line. This is bad punting that we're seeing from the Cougars. So the Cougs will have, they, the Huskies will have it back at the 23 yard line. We want to remind you, tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday is coming back as well. Terry, Howie, Jimmy, Kurt, and Frank all joined by new co host Michael Strahan, as they give you the final word on the Brett Favre saga. And they'll discuss whether or not this is a make or break season for the Dallas Cowboys. It's the Ford Drive One Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Dog start at the 21 yard line is where it's marked. Jake Locker will go under center. Poke and Homer in the backfield. Give it a poke once again up the middle. Nothing doing again. Maybe a couple. I got to say, don't want to criticize the true freshman too much because he's got a tall order starting as a true freshman. But whenever contact is coming to Polk, he is wilting as opposed to exploding. He has got to explode into these tacklers and show his athleticism. He has not broken a tackle in the two games thus far that we have watched him. He's got to start getting on that because they need him to start gaining yardage. It doesn't matter if there's a guy there. That's what Ty Willingham was saying. Your job as a running back is to gain yards, and that is Polk's job right now. Four carries, 14 yards today. He did get four on that. And this time in trouble is not to lose the football. Ball is loose, and... I believe the Huskies got back on it. It was Cavario Middleton. Nixon was the guy who was coming hard, and he came in untouched to Locker, and he did a nice job to hold Locker up from getting to that football. Got to be the worst feeling in the world for Jake Locker being held on to. This is a late fake by Polk a little bit, but not his fault. Nice play, but Locker just reaching for that ball, unable to get there. Oh, what a terrible feeling <laughs> as a quarterback. That ball is the most important thing on the field, and it looks like Cavario Middleton, Middleton is down. Middleton is down after getting on that fumble. He has been all over the field. Had a good catch. He had a good block on Locker's touchdown, and then saves what probably would be a Cougar touchdown by falling on that football. And we're going to see if we can get an idea of what happened here. Somebody might have fallen on him, and... 
Hard to tell, really. Maybe a knee to the dome there. Remember, just a true freshman. So many of these guys out there for the University of Washington, true freshman or redshirt freshman, looks like a leg. Looks like somebody went down on his leg and he's getting up awkwardly. That is a that is a tough injury if he cannot return for the University of Washington. Mario Middleton is a rising star. He can catch and turn, and he's got a big future. And early in this game, he's made some big plays already. Good news is he appears to be able to put some weight on that knee. Well, he does have a hitch in his giddy up, though. Meantime, the bottom line is a loss of 17. You look at the numbers from the first quarter. BYU put 124 yards of offense up there, but it's really only one important step, and that's the scoreboard, and it's tied at seven. So Jake Locker now for his own two-yard line has to take that off his shoe tops. Running out of time, has to roll away now. Now he throws downfield, and it went right through the hands of Tafuna and is caught by Goodwin for a first down. A break that was not coming Washington's way last week in Eugene. That was gonna be a pick and possibly a pick six. Well, Jake Locker got away that time. He does not look as fast as he did last year. He's still bothered by that hamstring. I don't doubt it. He knows he got lucky there. Coming right in front was Tafuna. Should have picked that ball. On the other hand, great concentration by DeAndre Goodwin. Poke in motion, and that was a busted play. Here's Locker trying to take it outside. He does. Now he'll take it outside again, and we'll get the first down. And that's just vintage Jake Locker and a flag for a late hit as well. That's what he can do. Busted play, protection breaks down, something goes wrong. He can make a play with his feet again. He's not taking a lot of significant contact thus far in this game, and he's responding well. Play. Late hit out of bounds, number 21 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. And even though BYU is known as a disciplined team, they do play with a chip on their shoulder, and those penalties are not odd for the Cougars to get. Here you see Locker again with a bad snap. I think they were trying to run some kind of zone play with him in a tailback sort of position. Both Brandon Howard and Kellen Fowler miss tackles. Locker makes a miss, makes guys look silly, and then gets out of bounds. So a big play for the Washington Huskies, and right now they're at the 44-yard line of the BYU Cougars. Might not have been pretty, but they'll take it. Give it to Polk again. Polk dances into the hole and stood straight up after a game of two. Operable word being dances. Well, I was talking about Harvey Unga and the way he kind of skips into the hole, but he skips into the hole with violence. Polk is skipping into the hole, and it's not as violent. It's more of like a PG skip into the hole as opposed to the <laughs> R-rated skip into the hole. Jan Jurgensen and, of course, Sean Doman, both those defensive mainstays for BYU, making the tackle. Cody Hobbin is uh, the injured Husky that is being tended to on the field now. And the last two, three plays, uh, a Husky has gone down. They're playing very physically out there right now. And BYU is a physical team. This offensive line for the University of Washington is experienced. In fact, being as experienced as they are as a Pac-10 offensive line, they should be able to get a push on a Mountain West team, even an experienced, mature Mountain West team like BYU. There you see Haben standing up. You had a look just a moment ago at Cavario Middleton, and it looked as though they were putting a brace or a splint, I'm not quite sure which, on that leg that was injured a couple of plays back, and that would be a serious blow, as would this, of course, to the Huskies. Skylar Fancher, a redshirt freshman, will take over for Haben. Haben's a guy that had a lot of time last year. Really one of those guys expected to help out Jake Locker and protect him. Well, he can't protect him, not putting any weight on that leg. So a couple of injuries uh, to offensive starters for the Huskies in the last three plays. Ball now at the 43-yard line, second down and eight, and Huskies all year have been looking at second and longs. There's Locker again, and he's absolutely destroyed. He had no place to go in that bound and coming, and he got him back at the 48-yard line. Locker has not had an easy time first two weeks of play. 
First Down Marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products every day. Overstock.com at home with the O. I was ready that time. I know you were. I know you were. I held back. So. You know, even if the University of Washington cannot figure it out here and get a first down, this has been a positive drive considering where they started with that mistake. Third down now. They run a little stun up front. Does BYU going deep for Curse. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Huskies. Not bad coverage from Brandon Howard out there, but it's one on one, and you always got to give it to the receiver when it's one on one. Locker recognizes that coverage, and that's the accuracy that the people here in Seattle have been waiting for. Jake Locker throwing it deep. Brandon Howard, only 5'9", first, six foot one, only two inches, three, four inches, but hey, it was enough to get that touchdown right into the end zone. Great did, job by Locker. Did a nice job to get his body between the defender and the ball, and that's the job of a wideout. Curse just a freshman, and Locker put it right on the numbers. And Rocco Mendenhall, not a happy guy right now. Flag is down. Gonna back this extra point try up the 15 yard line. Look at this, got his body between the defender and the ball. It's what you're supposed to do. And Walker laid it right in. Just a true freshman, and again, that's the accuracy, especially down the field, that Locker did not possess last year, and that's really the first we've seen of it this year. Try for point is up and good. Locker now six of eight for 118 yards. And a touchdown, and the Washington Huskies lead it with 10.38 remaining in the half. 14 to 7. The Cougs will have it when we come back. And again, he picks the hole and gets the first down. Stopped by the first wave, bounced off it. I'm continually impressed with the feet of Harvey Unga. He really can recognize things going full speed downhill in a short yarded situation to stop your feet and move into the correct hole is a very difficult thing to do. And remember, we're looking at a 240 pound back. He used to be running the ball back in the day with Lavelle Edwards in the Norm Chow days at BYU. It was all draws, but now they can line up in the I formation. Here they are again. Flags fall this time. That was Andrew George. Dead ball, false start. Number 88, offense, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Those are the kinds of things that the Cougars take pride in not doing. Well, they simply can't afford to. They're a Mountain West team. They're looking to get into the BCS this year. They feel they have a good enough team to do so. They feel their team is very good. No question, their offense is really, really good. They can't make those mistakes on the road. Out of the eye again on first and 15. Hall play fake. We'll put it up. Throws. Collie can't hang on again. Tough series for Austin Collie. Maybe, maybe the worst of his football career that we're watching right now. Six foot two, 206 pound junior out of El Dorado Hills, California, Oak Ridge High School. Austin Collie. That's two legitimate drops on this drive. A little high, but he's an athletic receiver that can make that play. Two legitimate drops, and then the touchdown pass, which very well could have been caught as well. Austin Colley, very upset with himself, and now out of the game. And Hall just one of his last six. Started the game six of six, remember? Although I don't think he could put it on Hall. You see those receivers in the hands. Here's a blitz. Hall throws underneath. Catch made this time by Onda. Onda keeps his feet. He'll be about five yards short of the first down. Knocked out of bounds inside the 20 just as good out of the backfield as he is running the ball in the I formation. Doesn't often happen at BYU because of the difference they have with the missions and these different things that they have, very unique school. But I think Harvey Unga, only a sophomore, is one of those guys that's gonna be looking into leaving early for the NFL. He has certainly got that skill level. So it'll be third down and five, and you have to think with a back like Unga, they could be thinking two down. see they're very successful in third down situations. Ball, straight back, throws, got a man, the catch made by Ashworth. Ashworth's going to be down to the five-yard line, first and goal for the BYU Cougars. That was a well-designed play, sort of a West Coast offense look from BYU. Vacapuna stretches the field with the swing route and then coming right 
underneath. That's what they call a stick route. And there's two of them, one underneath and one high. Ashworth ends up getting the ball and does a good job of turning up field. And now, with first and goal and Unga on your team, the Cougars are looking pretty good to tie this game. Ashworth is another one of those guys, a, a BYU product that personifies the BYU product. If, to talk about what you were talking about earlier, and that is a guy who has come back from a two-year mission. He played as a freshman. Now it's his sophomore year. He's older, presumably wiser. Unga, not this time. Stopped by the interior of the Washington defense. He doesn't get a lot of plays off, does he? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. You're talking about Ashworth, Barry, one of nine children, and, and the entire BYU media guide reads like this. One of nine children, mission in Minneapolis, Eagle Scout. We talked about all the guys that went on missions and all the guys that are married on this team. Many, many of these guys are also Eagle Scouts. That's right. Just a very interesting story for each and every one of these players. Not to mention academic all-conference. That's also in virtually every player's bio. Here's one again running behind. <laughs> Ran right up the back of Fu Vakapuna that time. And he's going to be stopped about a yard short of the goal line. That's 500 pounds worth of BYU backfield coming your way. But the University of Washington doing a really good job. And I liked it against Oregon as well. Really getting out to the edge in a hurry. Showing some speed and athleticism. Daniel Tail Nessheim finally catching up with Nate Williams. And there you see Luka running up the back of his fullback. A nice grip on that jersey. Pushing him out of the way. Third down, about a yard and a half to go for a touchdown for the Cougars. Play fake. Hall looks to the end zone. Wide open for the touchdown is Andrew George. They give you so many different looks. Very hard team to defend. Many different looks, but a lot of the same concept. One guy in the flat and another guy over the top. You're going to see Pitta below and he draws the defender and it's not hard for Max Hall to make that decision. Floats it over the top to Andrew George. Easy decision to make. And it was really easy because Pitta is their big time receiver. Of course the defense is going to gravitate to him and then you just flip it to George. Efficient BYU offensive football. 14 play drive for the score. It took them six minutes and 20 seconds and that's what they do. Mitch Payne drives the extra point through. Four minutes and 18 seconds remaining to be played here at the first half, and we are tied once again. The Huskies 14, the Cougs 14. When we come back, we'll send you to our college football studio with Michael Eves. Ooh, 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 us, I think we have that answer. Us, us, ask us, Mike. Meantime, the kickoff. Gonna be handled this time by Pope. Polk's going to be stopped as he crossed the 25-yard line. That's Jordan Polk, incidentally, not Chris Polk. It has been a damaging game so far for the Washington Huskies. First, it was Dorian Jones, and he took not only that shot to the head, but that one from his own teammate, and Cavario Middleton recovering a fumble, but somebody fell across his knee. The good news is, however, that both are expected back. Hobbin also went down for Washington. He, too, as J.J. told you, is expected back. Imperative here for the dogs to hold the ball and really possess it, get some first downs, even if they don't score, to get that defense a rest. The defense have been playing pretty well against a good BYU offense, but they need to rest on that sideline right now. Hobbin is back in the lineup right now, as a matter of fact. Right now, let's uh, go down once more to John Jackson. We've been talking injuries. John, uh, you've got another injury to talk about. Well, yeah, the injuries are mounting up for the Washington Huskies, and the big one this week, Spirit, the Husky mascot, is out with an injury. Barry, now he's his 12th year as the Huskies mascot, and this is his last year as the mascot for the team. He injured his shoulder chasing a squirrel. Now, no one knows when the last time the Huskies were the, without their mascot, but they say on this injury he'll be out 7 to 10 days. When I had a chance to catch up with Spirit and ask him, when will he be back, he growled and said, Whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, he's tough. No, spirit is tough. There's no question about it. But uh, going to be on the DL, going to be laid up uh, for a while. My dog, Bill, you know, yes, Bill, I know Bill, my dog, squirrel hunter as well. Indeed. But an app, he is an athlete. We have not had a squirrel in our house in probably three, four years. Truth is, spirit was just going too hard in practice. Just going too hard in practice and, and not able to get out here for Saturday's game. I don't really 
know when he'll be back, to be honest. But, you know, squirrel hunting, when you got to be out there perform on Saturday, probably not one. At 12 years old. I mean, that's 94, isn't it, in, in human years, 84? Here's Blocker again off the play fake this time to poke, and it's going to be a first down and a pickup of about 12. Design run for Jake Locker. Kellen Fowler makes the stop for BYU. Yeah, Spirit's 12. You can't be chasing squirrels at 12. No, not when you have the responsibility of being the UW mascot. Of course. Jake Locker, more than a mascot for the University of Washington. They can get those first downs whenever they want them. And I think that's in all the Husky mascots' contracts. No squirrel chasing, I believe. That's yeah, true. it's just like motorcycle rides, exactly. bungee cord jumping. You can't ski either. I know skydiving. That. It's just not the same without him howling on the side. Arr! No, no, they got the guy in the dog uniform, but that just Not the matter. same. No. There's Pope trying to get the outside. That's not going to happen either, and his struggles continue. Scott Johnson runs him out. Good physical play by Scott Johnson, the cornerback. Not a big guy, only 185 pounds. You expect Polk, starting Pac-10 running back. Now he wants out of the game. Looks shaken up a little bit. Shoulder, I think. Yeah, looks like he hit his shoulder. You expect the Pac-10 running back to be able to run over a cornerback that's 185 pounds, coming up to make a play. Polk does not look very sharp early in his career for the University of Washington. Again, just a freshman, and now it looks like he hurt his shoulder. This time the dogs will go with an empty backfield, five wide receivers. This has been a successful formation for the best ball. Four-man rush, quick toss this time, and a catch made by David Freeman. And Freeman will be stopped at about the 43, maybe the 44-yard line. Freeman's first catch of the year, another freshman. He's the backup to Chris Polk. He's actually a tailback. Lined up outside. What's happening at halftime? I'm Michael Eves and DeMarco Faro will be in the studio. Week two, all the scores, all the highlights. Been a lot of interesting games so far at halftime, or so far in this, uh, in this Saturday of football. And Polk being worked on, and we're pretty certain that is a shoulder. Locker throws into traffic. Able to hold on is Walt Winter. So now it's going to be fourth down. Not a bad throw by Locker. Looks a little more comfortable in the pocket. Definitely more comfortable than last year in the pocket. Walt Winter, sort of open, could have had that first down. And they didn't hold the ball long enough, Barry. They did not hold the ball long enough to get their defense a sufficient rest. Two minutes and 33 seconds left. BYU's going to have a shot. They have a very good two-minute offense. Reed White's going to call for a fair catch and make the fair catch at the 17-yard line. Well, we talked about the Washington offensive line and how experienced it is, and it's doing its job today. Of course, it's anchored uh, by a guy by the name of Juan Garcia. Been around the UW campus for about six years now, and PU had a chance to catch up, catch up with him on the sideline at practice. Interesting guy. There was 20 minutes before the game, and one of the same doctors that was telling me about, you know, I should get surgery, and it was the best interest of me. He told me, "You're 20 minutes away from proving us all wrong." You know, that kind of brought a smile to my face, and I was like, yeah, I'm either 20 minutes away from proving you wrong or 20 minutes away from proving you right. And how did it feel on the field in the game last Saturday? It felt good. I mean, it felt like it felt in practice. Uh, there's a couple times, you know, it was hurting a little bit, but I was just too excited. I was just happy to be out there. Good for you. Thank you. Well, Unga was out there this time, and he picked up about seven yards on first down. What we were talking about is he had a foot injury that was really serious. Looked like it would be career-ending. Liz Frank, you know, the same injury we talk about. Isaiah Stanback had a similar problem. The ex-quarterback here at the University of Washington. And Garcia was told he needed surgery. Then he decided not to get the surgery and just see what happened. And it was sort of a miracle comeback. Got through camp, and now he is the leader of that Washington offensive line. And they've got some confidence scoring some points here in the first half. Second down and short. Hall's going to go up here and throws underneath. And again, probably unable to make that catch. And he's hurting today. Big pressure from the best defender on Washington's team, Daniel Teo Nesheim. Not a big technique guy, Teo Nesheim, but all strength all the time. Loves to mix it up inside. Got to ask him yesterday what kind of technique he has or if he likes to spin moves or if he wants to play standing up in the NFL. He looked at me like I was crazy. Wants to do is overpower people, grab them by the neck, and throw them down. Third down, and the Cougs have been great on third down. 14 of 19 this year. Third and short, catch made, first down, pit up. I mean, that's a tremendous percentage. It really says a lot about this football team. 
We're tied at 14, 136 remaining in the half. Not a bad job by Mason Foster. Linebacker on a very skilled catching tight end, Dennis Pitta. Makes a pretty good tackle on him. And BYU is going to have to start going for it if they want to get a score up here before the end of the half. They are very effective in the two minute drive. Up to the sideline, making the catch as Collie gets out of bounds, a gain of about seven. Collie needed that desperately. And UW kind of gave it to him. They're letting him have that hitch right now. Corners back way off. They don't want to give up a home run here. And they, of course, will come to the line of scrimmage with no huddle. And an out of bounds play, of course, now. The play clock starts almost immediately. This time they go with a single back. Blitz comes. Hall picks it up and gets the pass out quickly, and the catch is made by Reed White, and that's going to be a first down at the 44-yard line. Cougars have two timeouts remaining. Nate Williams defending for the Huskies. Good job to pick the blitz up that time as they brought the house. So impressive, this BYU offense with the patience, how they operate, taking Washington apart, and now, look, they're threatening. Hall steps up, throws deep, a lot of contact. Pass picked. No flag. Interception by Mason Foster. A lot of contact. Well, we complimented Mason Foster a couple plays ago, even though he gave up the first down. Nice tackle on Pitta. This time, looking like a real cover corner out there. Running and making a big play. Underthrown by Max Hall, no question about it. But for a linebacker, to make this play, catching that ball in his hands. Usually linebackers have to catch it up against their Adams apple if they're gonna make a play way downfield and then cradling that ball, making sure his hand was under it. What a finesse play by Mason Foster. Another big play from a Washington Husky other than Jake Locker. Yeah, They've had him all through the half. That is what they need. Five wideouts, nobody in the backfield for Locker. Locker steps up, throws underneath. And DeAndre Goodwin well covered that time by Dolman and Bauman. Locker really looks to be forcing some balls underneath in this football game. Has some time, experienced offensive line, comfortable in the pocket, just standing there and then trying to force it underneath. He's got to go downfield. Locker once again. Three man rush this time, throwing deep and overthrowing his intended receiver. Pierce, and once again, I, I have to say, it looked like Pierce cut his rod short. These are just freshmen out there, and they're looking at a different look. Last week, these young receivers, these inexperienced receivers for the Huskies, really had a tough task with the two corners from Oregon, the two best in the country, Jarius Bird, Walter Thurman, the third playing bump the whole time, right up in their face. There was no question about it. Now, there's a different look from BYU. Zones, and these guys have to make decisions, and it's a little more difficult. You find yourself out there in space having to make decisions, and these guys are making a few mistakes. Meantime, third and 10. Walker will step up. Now he throws underneath. Homer makes the catch, but it's short at the first down. With 35 seconds left, let's see if BYU calls a timeout here, if they will be content just to let the clock run down. And so far, they're content. Now they will call a timeout with 26 seconds. Gives us an opportunity for our Acura drive around campus. And this one a little bit more unusual than uh, normal because this one's an aqua drive around campus. And uh, a lot of boats up here in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of great places to go boating. You got Lake Washington. Of course, you got the Puget Sound. Go out in the ocean. It is a beautiful scene, to say the least, especially on a day like this. You know, we opened the show out there on that beautiful yacht, the Nicole Marie, I believe it was called, and I kind of didn't want to leave the yacht. And even though it's a very exciting game here going on, and you got to love Unga and Locker and all these guys making plays and these young men competing hard and BYU a unique program and Washington just hanging on with Ty Willingham, but man, Barry, I mean, that yacht, they had a beautiful spread. And I
wanted to go downstairs and look at all the bedrooms. I mean, we could have really taken a tour. It but was nice, but I, but uh, they asked us to leave. Yeah, snatched off the yacht. Absolutely. Like I was a pirate or it was something. A, yes. Walk, walk over there on that board. <laughs> Reed White going to let this one bounce, and it is going to be saved, I believe, by the one line on a big time play. 63-yard punter was Chris Stevens who made the play. Well, that's the way you draw it up. However, I think they're going to say it's a touchback. That Stevens foot was down in the end zone and oh, it was. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Chris shame. Stevens, the senior, making a big play on special teams. They're almost making a big play on special teams. Want to guess where Stevens is from? He's the greatest tailback ever out of Mojave, California. I did not know that. Not a lot of competition out there, but Stevens was a no. big time recruit out of the desert. It's hot. It's hot time. Seven iguanas he showed up with on the plane tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And this will uh, essentially do it for the first half. Max Hall takes a knee and a very entertaining first half here, I thought. We're tied. The Washington Huskies 14 and the BYU Cougars 14. And a lot of big plays being played by, being made, I should say, by guys you expect to make big plays. Both quarterbacks have been very efficient. And the Huskies have to be very pleased, I think, to go in with a tie at the half. They've played very well, played very well on the defensive side of the football as well, because they're playing an offensive juggernaut. This team averages more than 30 points a game and has for the last couple of years, and it's a team that really feels gets by this game, could conceivably run the table. They've had a lot of guys making plays, and I'm talking about the Huskies, other than Locker, defensive guys, young guys, offensive guys, people stepping up. They should have a pretty good feeling going in at halftime. BYU, 228 yards at the half, so they look like themselves offensively, but they know they're in a fight on the road against a Pac-10 squad. So both teams leave the field. I'm sure confident that they can come out in the second half and win it. I would think uh, we mentioned the Washington defense. Washington defense playing pretty well, we thought, but still gave up 228 yards. So I would think Ty Willingham will have to get him to tighten it up. Let's go to the sideline, and J.J.'s with Ty Willingham. You got it, J.J. Yeah, thanks, Barry. We're down with Coach Willingham. And, Coach, you talked about how important it was for your team to get off to a fast start. Are you happy with the way they get off today? Well, I'm, I'm happy that we're even right now. Uh, honestly, you, we should be ahead in this ball game because we let a few things happen that we've got to eliminate, things that we talked to our defense about, eye discipline, and about executing the things the way we can execute. The one other thing that you were concerned about is that the movement of the BYU defense. It seems like your blockers up front have that under control. Do you think you're in control of that 3-4 defense and all the movement that they possess? No, not yet, because what we've been able to do, we've been fairly able to pass the football to a decent degree, but what we haven't done, we have not run the football, and that's what we've got to have. Hey, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, that'll do it for us. We'll go to the college studio for the DirecTV halftime show. Michael Lee, DeMarco Farr, take it away. All right, JJ, thanks a lot. And yeah, folks, this is the DirecTV halftime show. It was a back and forth affair in that first half between the Huskies and the Cougars, but the game is tied 14 all. Hey, welcome back to Husky Stadium. Barry Tompkins along with Petros Papadakis. We prepare to start the second half. We're tied at 14. Suddenly, a football game is broken out, Pete. Well, the University of Washington and Ty Willingham and Jake Locker and all these fans here in Seattle by the lake, they needed this desperately. They needed to be competitive and make plays in the first half. Guys other than Jake Locker stepping up like Curse with the long touchdown catch. True freshmen finally getting their first taste of success. That's what Washington needed. Now, BYU, they realize they're in a football game. They have not had great success out of conference on the road, but still they're sitting on the nation's longest active winning streak at 11 games. They know what they have to do. They have to be efficient. Washington has not been a team that finishes games well. That has been the knock on Ty Willingham in his career at Washington. They have got to step up and make plays in the fourth quarter and they have to find somebody in the backfield to make plays other than Jake Locker their starting freshman tailback Polk right now is out with a shoulder injury well you heard Ty Willingham tell John Jackson going off at halftime reasonably pleased with his team's performance let's hear what Bronco Mendenhall had to say as John Jackson was talking to him just a little while ago JJ what did Bronco say to you 
Hey, well, Barry, when I had a chance to catch up with the coach, he said he's extremely pleased with the way the offense has been playing. They've been dominating all the statistical categories, but he is upset with his secondary play and the fact that they've been able to give up so many big plays, especially the deep ball. That is what he says needs to be eliminated in the second half. Lastly, he thinks that execution over the long term is what's going to win this game. Remember at BYU, that's what he preaches. Execution, execution, execution. He thinks that will win this ball game. Barry? So we prepare to start the second half. And again, first possessions, we talked about how, how important that first possession of the first half would be. And I think the same could be said about the first possession of the second half. And the Huskies will have it to start the second half. Jordan Polk will be the deep man, along with Tripper Johnson. Kick is a driving kick that takes a big hop and is still bouncing loose and finally picking it up is Polk and Polk's got some room at the 20, 25, 30 trying to get around the kicker and couldn't do it throwing out of bounds at the 35 yard line big peel back block with Johnny Curtin and what was a disastrous beginning to a special teams play turned out pretty good for UW here are the numbers at the end of the first half. We mentioned this going away at the break. 228 yards of offense for BYU. 157 yards of offense for Washington. But look at only 25 yards rushing. Most of those, once again, from the quarterback, Jake Locker. Got to get some help from the running back position. And David Freeman will be the running back as Polk went out with what appeared to be a shoulder injury in the first half. Short drop this time and a quick hitch to DeAndre Goodwin. Same way they started the first half. This time it gets about two. David Tafuna defending for BYU. Locker does look less jittery in the pocket this year. He's more experienced. He knows he's got to distribute the ball a little bit more. The question is how much are his teammates with all that inexperience on the perimeter and in the backfield, how much are they going to support him? The offensive line has looked pretty solid thus far. We saw his numbers, and again, this time it's going to be Freeman, and Freeman slips ahead for the first down. Once again, an errant pass from center, but a great job. And long this game, I, I would imagine in two weeks, really, by a running back. That's the longest game they have had this year for a guy in the running back position, Kellen Flat Fowler. The guy who ends up making the play, safety's making tackles on running backs. You like the running back's chances. And there you see Freeman, unlike Polk in the first half, lowering his head and battling downfield. 5'7", 190 pound true freshman out of Inglewood, California. Looks like he knows what he's doing right now. Not a big guy, but was effective on that play. Incidentally, Cavario Middleton back in the ball game to tight end. That bodes well for the Huskies. Here's that blocker, pulls it down gets what he can and what he can is about four maybe five yards on the play across midfield still big and physical still knows how to run the football still has perfect instincts he took Jan Jorgensen who's a fantastic defensive end for BYU and Matt Bauman their linebacker for a little bit of a ride still Barry you can't help but mention Jake Locker does not look as fast as he normally is that hamstring still hampering him what a courageous soldier of a player still going out there and carrying his football team well he is that just not only an amazing player, just an amazing guy. Enjoy talking to him. Talked to him the last couple of weeks. Here's Locker again. Locker not going to get much this time. A yard, maybe two yards. Jan Jorgensen, first man to him. Designed run play for Locker that time. They were really trying to pull people with the fake to David Freeman coming across there. But Freeman, still just a true freshman, a little late on the fake, and the play never really developed the way they wanted it to. So it's going to be third down. And five, the dogs three of six in third down situations in this game. And this is a big one here. They want to maintain possession, keep the ball away from BYU as long as they can. Preferably put some points up in the process. Quick toss this time to Curtis. He's got it. Wolfen has the first down as well. And we've seen Jermaine Curse grow up a little bit in this football game. Nice play for a first down. That's what receivers have to do. They have to be there for their quarterback on third and short. And that's what Kirst did that time. Making sure he got the first down, taking a blow, but forward progress got it to him. Nice tackle by Scott Johnson. It sure was. Sure tackle. An angry tackler out there at corner for BYU. Love to have corners that come up and make plays. 
So a first down at the 43-yard line. Play fake. Locker has to get away from pressure, which is coming. And now Locker's going to run. Midfield 45 and out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Might have only gained a yard or so. Matt Bauman made sure that he did not turn that upfield. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with, with Overstock.com. At home with the O. That was it. I'll get it. You got it. It's coming. You know, I'm like one of these freshman backs. It's I need reps. It's only the second year. Second down and ten. It's now Middleton lines up in the slot. And now comes in motion. Again, here's the Freeman. And Freeman gets a little gap again. And gets it ahead to the 35-yard line. And the crowd reacting to that. Well, you're starting to see a guy win a starting job right now out on the field. You'd like to have a guy win a starting job in camp. But David Freeman winning his job right now in the second game. A Little bit of a delayed handoff. Nice block from Paul Homer coming right at you is David Freeman. David Nixon gets him down, but Freeman is punishing people. Like you said, Barry, not a big guy. Five foot seven, 190 pounds, just a true freshman. But you don't have to be big to be physical in the game of football. And that's the beauty of this game. Two carries, 17 yards for Freeman, third down. And three. And this time it's home with a fullback for the first down of the 30. Ben Osai and Jordan White Frisbee open that up for him nicely. Well, Paul Homer has a good block. Last down this time. That's a giant hole. Good block. And the freshman tight end, Camario Middleton, who left earlier with an injury. You see Homer taking that ball up the field with authority. Right now, you dub looking strong in their first possession. Well, they're getting help from, you mentioned it earlier, but from other people besides Jake Locker. This time it's Locker on the keeper, just pulled it out, and he's taking it down to the 11 yard line and almost took it to the house. Last year, Jake Locker scores on that play. But his hamstring is hampering him. It is clear. He can still run the football like no other at the quarterback position. He looks a little bit more like Tim Tebow right now because he doesn't have all his speed. Jake Locker's a guy because of that hamstring that did not see live action in camp. He is getting that live action right now. I mean, what a great run in traffic by a quarterback. This would be the best running back in the Pac-10 by far if he played that position. As it is a first down at the 12 yard line, so they can make a first down without getting into the end zone. This time it's Freeman. Freeman running behind a wall of blockers. Gets about two. Ian Doolin on the stop. You see the difference in the physicality of this running back, this freshman running back, as opposed to the Polk who started the game. They're starting to find their run game. Freeman is doing very well this drive and carrying the load. He has got to be tired and wide-eyed right now, though, Barry. But as you said, doing his job. The ball inside the 10-yard line, right at the 9, second down. They're not all great runs, but they can all be physical runs. This time they bunch the receivers to the left side, the short side of the field. And this time pitching somehow. Freeman comes away with it. Freeman tries to turn it upfield and gets inside the five to about the three yard line. It was Jordan Polk coming on the reverse. Polk. They bring Polk in kind of a perimeter guy in the same way that James Rogers is a perimeter guy for Oregon State. Takes that end around. Locker showing just such strength and staying up and able to deliver that pitch to Polk. Polk takes a big. Massive hit from Matt Ayu, but not before a pretty positive game, but third down and deep. Third down and less than a yard. Locker on the draw play. As the first down gets close to the goal line, he'll be stopped short of the end zone, but the Dogs will have four downs to punch it in. Well, the pride of Ferndale, Washington, and really the most celebrated athlete, young athlete in the history of this state, Jake Locker that time. A little confused on which hole he wanted to take, but you see his strength runs right into Sean Dolman, but still able to muscle forward for that first down. 
We were with him yesterday, Barry, and just shaking his hand. You know, it's like shaking hands with a bear. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. a big guy. Yeah, you can drop a football through his hands. Timeout is going to be called. We'll jump away. Tied at 14. Dogs driving. Welcome back, 7.44 remaining in the third quarter here. Washington has had the ball this entire period. They have it at the one yard line now. 12 plays so far in this drive, consuming seven minutes, 16 seconds. At the one yard line, Kravitz is in a tailback. So the power backfield, Homer and Kravitz. This is Kravitz and he's in, touchdown Washington. Drive. And UW finishes it off with all the anger of both their fullbacks. Paul Homer leading the way. He had a nice carry on this drive. And Luke Kravitz, a senior out of Olympia, Washington, a solid leader for this football team. Nice push on the offensive line. We expected they would get that against the Mountain West defense. And Kravitz rolls, not quite beautifully, into the end zone. <laughs> Perkins to try to add the 21st point for the Huskies. He drives it through, and Washington leads it by seven. Very impressive drive. It used a lot of the clock. Seven minutes, 38 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter, and the Huskies have gone on top by seven on the first possession of the second half. Great drive. College Football Saturday is brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. By U.S. Bank. Yes, there is a bank that's eager to help your future look brighter. Visit your local U.S. Bank to learn how we can make your future take off. And the first down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football. Overstock.com. At home with the O. Well, there is joy here in Seattle as you get a look at Luke Kravitz just punched that one into the end zone ending a 13 play drive 11 of those 13 plays were rushes only two passes and those were only for nine yards taking up a whole bunch of time as we have noted that's exactly what you have needed to start off the second half so ball going to kick it off high end of a red kick it's going to be Chambers at the five yard line Chambers trying to get to the outside does now he's got a little gap Cuts it inside, gets across the 35 to the 37 before Nate Williams stops him, but good field position to start things here for BYU, 32-yard return. Well, there's no question you expect this BYU offense to respond with people like Max Hall, Harvey Unga, who's been fantastic in this game, Dennis Pitta, the tight end, Austin Colley. There you see the chippiness. Again, I told you, this BYU team, that's O'Neal Chambers right there, this is a BYU team that plays with a big chip on their shoulder. And often they have to. The give this to Ingra on first down. He's cracked. And that's significant, P, because in the first half, BYU averaged over six yards on every first down play, and they were in great position going to second down. That was a very physical play by Darren Harris, and you're absolutely right. Success on first down is imperative for the Washington defense. Darren Harris with a big play. In Daniel Teo Nesheim was there to clean it up if Harris didn't get him. There's a man down. Yeah, it looks like cramps. And again, you see that quite a lot. Quentin Richardson is the man down. They better hope it's a cramp for Quentin Richardson because they need him out there on the edge playing corner. Big interception last week against Oregon. Look at Darren Harris with this hit here. Nesheim's being held. Otherwise, he might have made that play. And here comes Harris. Perfect, big tackle, textbook. Uses his fingers, digs into Unga's jersey. He can't do it better than that. Nice run support by a strong safety coming up to the line of scrimmage, tackling a big back. Richardson had to go out. Vonzel McDowell comes in. Let's see if Max Hall doesn't test that side. They've got Collie out there on him one on one. Second out and nine. Ball will give it to Unga again. Unga's going to get a little bit of room. 35, or 45 rather, midfield, out of bounds, first down. Who needs to test the young corner? And you get a great block by Fu Vakapuna and Harvey Unga coming right behind him. Again, this is just a sophomore 
Only 64 yards against Northern Iowa. That's because they stacked the box and dared Max Hall to throw. This guy is a load. Got 87 yards in this game so far. We're just getting started here in the third quarter. Here's Hall, rolls out, throws, pass is caught by Pitta. Pitta's got some room to the 35 to the 32 yard line of the Huskies. So all of a sudden the Cougs picking it up in chunks. Big mistake there by Josh Gage. And that's what Ty Willingham was telling John Jackson right before halftime. Big giant mistake. They have to recognize those flat patterns. Those guys coming out there into space on the perimeter must be guarded. Max Hall is not going to hurt you running the football. He's going to hurt you throwing the football. And Gage bit on Max Hall, leaving the man open. First down. They mark it at the 33-yard line. Here's Unga again, trying to bounce it outside. But again, he gets those shoulders going the right direction. He didn't get a lot, but he got more than he normally would have. Well, any other back right now would have been dropped for no gain. Daniel Tail Nesheim finally catches up along with Mesfin Forrester. But watch Unga from behind. A lot of big backs can run physically, but not many of them run with great feet and great patience. And that's exactly what Unga has. Very impressed with this young man. And again, Barry, I don't think it's wrong to say, just a sophomore, here's a guy that can really look into leaving early. Luke Staley left early for BYU as a running back. Second down and seven. And again, it's on that. Again, he finds the hole. This time he's tripped up short of the 25-yard line. He picked up about four more. And again, he's just kind of running behind Fui Vakapuna. Why not? Why not? They're very physical in that backfield. And you're looking at kind of a change in the Mountain West. Bronco Mendenhall is, is one of the guys that's changing it. Lots of running the football, a little bit more traditional. It used to be just throwing around in the old whack, but Colorado State likes to run the football. Utah with Darrell Mack likes to run the football. And of course, we're watching Munda here for BYU. Third down and three. They go out of the gun. Eight of 10 on third downs today. Ball steps up. Make it 9 of 11. Collie makes a catch, shakes a tackler. He make it in. He's at the 10, trying to take it to the outside and can't do it. And he's dropped back at the 11-yard line by Vonzel McDowell. Nice open field tackle. Absolutely. Good job breaking down by Vonzel McDowell, Jr. But a pretty strong look from Austin Collie. Kind of circumventing the entire field to get that yardage. Everybody passes it by. Foster kind of knocks. Darren Harris off the tackle. And then Collie's just sort of running down the field free. BYU's offense looking as efficient as always. Well, they have 228 yards in the first half. They bounce right back here in the second half after Washington scored to open the half. There's a Unga, or this time it's Vakapuna, and he's going to take it in for the touchdown. Fui Vakapuna, his first carry. The young man out of Glendale, Utah. A senior getting some love. That's a 250-pound back looking very athletic, jumping into the end zone right behind Ray Finga and Matt Reynolds. Looks like there's a man down. Two men down for BYU. Both, both the left side of the line, Matt Reynolds and Ray Finga. And those were the guys. Down. Those were the guys that led Fui Bakapuno into the end zone. Reynolds is okay. He's up and walking off. And I, I would think he's in, but this may be reviewed. I suspect it will be reviewed. Well, they're all reviewed. That's right. Whether or not they stop play is a different story. We've had some adventures with the instant replay here in the NCAA over the last couple of years. Let's look at the right knee of Fui Vakapuna, the physical fullback for BYU. May be down right before, but I don't know if they'll overturn it. That ball did make it over the end zone. The question is, was the right knee down? It looks like they're going to kick it. Ray Fenga also will come off, and he'll come off under his own power, albeit with a little bit of a hitch. So far, there's no review. And there will not be one. Try for point, up and good. And we're tied at 21. So a very effective drive after the Huskies had a long drive. 4.17 left, third quarter, 21 all. Well, the campus here in Seattle of the University of Washington, beautiful campus. Great place to take a run, take a walk, go to school. First down at the three-yard line, 
36 ticks left here in the third quarter. Paul gives to Inga, and Inga drives it out to about the four yard line. That's just about the yard line. We got to see the strength that time of Daniel Teo Nesheim, one of the strongest players in the Pac-10 and by far the best defender on this team. He gets a hold of Unga and takes it down. And we got to meet with Daniel yesterday, delightful young man, a quiet guy, but a guy that just loves to play football and loves to eat. He is the heart and soul of the defense. Yep. Don't know if they'll get this play off before the end of the third quarter, and they won't. Time runs out here in the third quarter. And interestingly enough, we played three quarters. Each team has scored a touchdown in each of the three quarters, and we're tied at 21. 15 minutes of football remaining. This game will be decided in those final 15 or more. 21 Huskies, 21 Cougars. Welcome back. Beautiful day here on Lake Washington. You're watching Pac-10 College Football Saturday. We got a good one for you here today. The BYU Cougars ranked 15 in the land. And the Washington Huskies tied at 21 as we begin the final quarter. Cougars shadow their own goalposts here. Start at the four-yard line, second and nine, and that pass is batted down by Mason Foster. Foster with a big interception and then the big bat down. He's made some giant plays in this football game thus far. Just a sophomore. He's an emerging star right now at linebacker for Washington. Ten tackles versus Oregon. What a hurt. Look at that. All those pads on and he still got up that high. Wow. That's what you're supposed to do. He was being blocked. Jump up, try to knock it down. And he did. A real play. So now it's third down and nine and a big play right here for the BYU Cougars. Max Hall lines up in his own end zone. Cougars have been very effective on third downs, not only today, but all season. Hall up throws. Caught by Pitta for a first down at the 32-yard line. Well covered by Nate Williams. Lots of contact, and Pitta comes down with it. There was no help in the middle for UW's defense. Donald Butler came on a blitz. So did Foster. Both those guys, and Foster is down. Oh, he's rolling over now and getting up, but Foster is down. Both those guys blitz, so no help in the middle. That means one-on-one. -on -one. Nate Williams versus Pitta. Pretty good coverage, like you said, Barry, but Pitta wins that battle with really soft hands. And there you see yet another injury for the University of Washington. That's cramps also, I think, and you talked about it last week. Early in the season, you see that a lot. We've seen it twice here today with Quentin Richardson, who is back in the ball game, incidentally, and now Mason Foster. Absolutely, cramps once again. We just got a look at Ty Willingham on the sideline, consulting with his players and staff. A lot of negativity surrounding this program, really, this decade. The whole Rick Neuheisel thing, Gilbertson did not last long taking over for Neuheisel. Ty came in after his stint at Notre Dame. Positive man, positive influence, great role model for these kids to follow. A fantastic coach, almost kind of a football idealist, you want to say. Ty Willingham looks in your eyes when he talks and really just a great role model for young men to play football for. And really cleaned up the image of this Washington program. All that being said, negative feelings because the lack of victories. People here in Seattle, they expect 10, 11 wins a season. They expect Rose Bowls every year, and they should because this program is that special. A victory here would really quell a lot of that stuff swirling around Ty, swirling around this program. But this is a huge fourth quarter. You know, I mean, this might be the biggest fourth quarter in the career thus far of Ty Willingham here at Washington. Yeah, and you know, I think the thing is, Will it quell it is the big question. And I think there's a tendency up here for people not to look highly upon teams like BYU. Uh, they come out of the Mountain West Conference and don't play a stir in a competition. I'll tell you what, this is a good football team. And should Washington win this game, by no means a given. The folks up here have got to give it up for them. I mean, this is a good team they will have beat. Good team that's looking to go undefeated. The pride of the Mountain West along with Utah. That's what the Cougars are. Give this time once more to Unga, try to get him to the outside. He cuts it inside instead, and another big first down short of midfield. And how are you not a good team with a back like Unga? This guy's been fun to watch all afternoon. That time taking Donald Butler and Nate Williams for a ride. Great blocking, but even better vision. 
getting locked up pretty solid there was Alameda Ta'amu. And Unga just barreling down the field. He's gotten stronger in the fourth quarter as we predicted. 18 carries now, 110 yards for Unga, and he's still got 14 minutes to play. Max Hall with time, steps up in the pocket. Pretty good defensive play that time by Darren Harris. Really impressed with Max Hall in this game. We talk about efficiency and consistency and all those things that he's done. And much of that is because he makes decisions. I mean, this is a guy that makes decisions and gets rid of the ball. In the same way that Colt Brennan, also not a big guy, was able to do last year for the University of Hawaii and, and for the Washington Redskins in their preseason. Colt was fantastic. Max Hall only 6'1", but makes decisions, delivers the football quickly. Learned at the knee of his uncle, former commentator here at Fox. Talking about Danny White. Throw and catch by Reed. And Reed will be stopped about a yard short of the first down. We see that delivery again from Max Hall. That big boy out. Really gets it to Michael Reed. And here is Max Hall. Wants to play on the PGA Tour. Says, I should be good enough to do that. Says Dennis Pitta. A lot of guys think that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Crab legs, you had some crab last night. All you guys did, except for me. Had it at my house last year, remember that? I remember, you put down a whole, like, piece of tablecloth. Like in Baltimore. <laughs> this, again, the roll out, and a great grab that time. What concentration by Pitta. He couldn't have been covered any better. But the simple fact is, Darren Harris didn't really look for the ball, and he's down. Darren Harris looks like he's hurt pretty seriously here. Don't want to make any speculation, but a lot of activity down there around Darren Harris, who had pretty good coverage. I mean, he was right on top of Pitta, but Pitta just so fantastic in traffic, making catches. And it's kind of a deep out. Those guys are battling the whole way. Harris kind of ends up turning over on his neck. And they will take every precaution, of course, as they do with any kind of injury like this. We don't want to speculate of what might have happened, but did fall awkwardly, and they will stabilize him, and quite sure they will put him in a brace and uh, keep him immobile and get him off to the hospital. And, of course, we will let you know as soon as we know anything. Tied at 21, and we'll be back. Well, all attention here at Husky Stadium continues to be on Darren Harris. He has remained down. They have kept him stable. They have put him in a brace. They have brought an ambulance out onto the field, and you can see the Husky players in prayer. The BYU players, incidentally, as soon as Harris went down, were signaling to the Washington bench, get the medics over here and get them over here in a hurry, and they did respond as well as can be expected under these circumstances. Now, remember, it, in college football, in football in general, they will take every possible precaution so what we're hoping we're looking at here is one of one of those cases where they are taking all the precautions but that the injury may not be quite as serious as it first appeared and we will try to find out anything we can if you are a friend or family of Darren Harris to let you know as we move along in this football game but right now the story is all about Darren Harris and uh, you could see on the field and this Unfortunately, I've seen a number of injuries like this, and this is what you see from players, and uh, they all know that it's very much a part of the game, but when it happens, there's no reconciling it. Well, we had a similar situation last year. I don't know if it's a similar injury or not, but Jake Locker went down against Oregon State, and we had the ambulance and the stabilization and removing him from the field. Tough scene always when guys go down in this way. And the mother, I'm assuming that this is the mother of Darren Harris who is uh, coming out on the field. Security had detained her and she was, needless to say, outraged and she will come over and uh, I'm assuming that this is his mom. I do not know, but we'll make that assumption and uh, we're quite certain that it is and uh, she will uh, add whatever she can to this uh, 
this situation, a situation nobody around this sport likes to ever see. John Jackson is somewhere in the area down there, JJ. Yeah, Barry, the medical staff for both BYU and Washington taking every medical precaution. It appears that Darren Harris family members have come down on the field. They obviously are very concerned. It's really hard to tell. They immobilized him. They don't, don't obviously don't want him to move at this situation. The fans now giving a round of applause. So we'll try to keep you updated as much as possible. Of course, a very difficult situation down here because they want to take every precaution. They're going to rather be cautious as opposed to taking any chances. I'll keep you updated as I find out stuff down here. All right, thanks very much, JJ. And uh, I'm sure that would be a relief to anyone uh, who knows Darren watching this game at home. We will try to get all the information. It did appear that he was moving on uh, on that cart. And of course, that really bodes well. That's always a good sign. You saw Ty Willingham addressing what we assume is Darren's mother. One of the reasons people send their kids to play for Ty Willingham because of the way he is, his demeanor, and what he means to these kids and their parents, the kids that come play football for him and put themselves at risk with him as their coach. And uh, here he is. You can see him lifting his arms there. It appears to be that there is some movement. But again, we can't emphasize enough that for years, and maybe it was since the injury to Daryl Stingley many, many years ago, precautions, every precaution is taken when there is an injury like this. And oftentimes, because of those precautions, it looks worse than what it is. But again, the precautions are more than necessary. And patience is required from everybody in dealing with these things. Well, we saw this last year with Jake Locker in a game that we uh, broadcast at Oregon State. And the locker went off exactly the same way. And before the end of the game, he's back on the sideline. We'll keep you posted. We will pass on every bit of information that we can get. First down for BYU inside the 22-yard line. Ender gets the call and just runs over people. Down about the 17-yard line. He got five, almost six yards out of absolutely nothing. And that's always the toughest play in football, the play after somebody gets hurt seriously. Everybody's a little tentative. Everybody's got to go about their job. Everybody's got to do their best for their team. But everybody's mind, even the BYU players, are on Darren Harris right now and, and his health and a little bit of their own health. Ball throws to Pitta. Pitta gets inside that block, has a first down at the 10-yard line. Nate Williams makes the tackle, but another BYU first down. BYU just is what they are, Barry. Yeah. And they're going to run the ball with Unga, and they're going to get the ball mostly in the flat. Some people like Pitta, and Austin Conley's been pretty big in this game. And they got a quarterback who's a, a very good, and I was going to say use the word mechanic, and I don't mean that as a slight at all. He just does what he needs to do, makes good reads, and puts the ball where his guys can catch it. Delivers it almost every time. Now we're going to flag. And this, I believe, will back the Cougars up. Dead ball, false start. Number 74, offense. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. Travis Bright. Well, that's the second false start that BYU has had in this game. Ray Finga, the other guard, was the first French presser. This time, Bright. First down back at the 15 yard line now. Here comes Unger. Tries to bounce it to the outside. And he cuts it in to the 10. Gets it down to the six yard line. Bakapuna once again clearing the way for his running mate, Harvey Unger. Twenty carries, 123 yards now for Unga. Well, Washington's played BYU a little bit more vanilla in that they haven't stacked the box. They've blitzed and done some things, but they haven't stacked the box, kind of daring Unga to get yards, and he's gotten them. There he is again, and this time he's in. Touchdown! Fumble the football, and let's see. They're going to say Washington ball. He lost it before he crossed the goal line. And the Huskies dodge a major bullet. 
What a hit on the goal line on Unga. Great physical run by Unga. Does everything but holds on to the ball. Now there's a discussion going on here, so hold the phone for a minute. But the question is whether or not he was into the end zone. Now, now it's going to stand as called. Tripper Johnson comes away with a football, and the Huskies will have it. The grandpa of UW, Tripper Johnson, a guy that played professional baseball for a long time, Major League Baseball guy, signed in 2000 to play basketball or baseball at UW and did. Now he's back at UW after a career playing baseball. An older dude coming up with a giant play. I'll say, and you saw that replay clearly showed you that Unga dropped the football before he got to the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And we remain tied at 21. First real break of the football game. Big hit by Trenton Tuiasasopo that lodged that ball loose. Great run by Wunga. They're going to review this, but the replay that we had a moment ago clearly showed the ball was loose before Unga got to the end zone. I think they may be looking for the spot. Now, there is a possibility they might move this back to the one or two yard BYU. line. Well, BYU's asking for the review. So apparently they just want to know if the ball was in fact dropped before he got to the end zone. It was a 96 yard drive by BYU. Started at their own three and ended at the Washington one. Well, during this Booth Review, World Financial Group asks, have you reviewed your finances lately? World Financial Group, your dreams, our strategy. It was pretty clear that the ball was out before Uber got the end zone. It looked that way. Where did they recover it? They're looking for a spot, I believe. I thought it was Tui Asasopo with the big hit, but it's not. After video review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, University of Washington. Free safety, Nate Williams leading with his helmet. Knocks that ball loose from Unga. Nate Williams only 207 pounds and just a sophomore. Played a little bit last year, 32 tackles in 2007. He's not going to have a tackle bigger than that tackle right there on Harvey Unga, knocking that ball loose. And again, great series by BYU all the way down the field. Unga with a great physical run, just couldn't hold the rock all the way over that line. Very frustrating, demoralizing turn of events for the Cougars. First turnover of the ball game for the Cougars, and our second turnover, but the most costly for sure. Last one was near the end of the first half. So they'll mark it at the 20-yard line. That's where the Huskies will start. Bronco Mendenhall obviously not pleased with those goings on, and neither is Harvey Unga, although it was really not on him. Sometimes you get hit and the ball comes out. That's Sometimes it. collisions are so physical. There's never been a running back ever that has no fumbles. Even the best guys who hold the ball with the most security lose that football. So Jake Locker will go to work. Tied at 21. And he gave us the Freeman. And Freeman wiggles through a little hole. He gets across the 25 to the 27 yard line. A pickup of seven. Gave it to Funa on the stop. And we go to the sidelines. Here's JJ. What do you got, JJ? Well, thanks, Barry. The news for Darren Harris, who was taken to the hospital, is all good for Washington. He's been taken to Harborview Hospital. He has both of his parents with him, his mom and his dad. The good news is, is at the end of him getting on the table, he actually wanted to get back up. So he showed movement in both extremities. He actually wanted to get back in this game, if you can believe that. <laughs> so the good news for him, for the on the sideline of the Washington Huskies is Darren Harris appears to be all right. Back all here. right, that's great. JJ, thank you very much. I'm sure a great relief to uh, anyone who knows Darren Harris. Walker with an empty backfield. Throws underneath, and a catch is made this time by Cavario Middleton, and that's going to be a first down at the 37-yard line. But you're going to see what Jake Locker sees right here. The snap on target. They've had some errant ones, and just a quick snappy pass out there to the freshman, Gavario Middleton, who is emerging. We've seen some young guys on both sides of the ball for Washington finally start to flourish here in Seattle in Husky Stadium. Middleton, probably the biggest young star they've had thus far. Now they run the option. Locker on the keep, shaking tacklers, gets it to the 45-yard line. See, tough, Pete. How about being his pitch man? 
You think he's pitching it? <laughs> Not unless somebody's going to hit him in the chin. Colby Clawson and Scott Johnson converge to make the tackle, but not before Locker makes another very physical play. There you see Freeman out there. Pitch it, Jake, pitch it. Oh, no. He's going to take it up the field, make a couple guys miss, and lurch forward for a very good gain on first down. Now second and short. A lot of plays to choose from now. This time Logan comes to the near side. Goodwin to the far side with Middleton in the slot. Freeman, the running back, and he's been effective. This is Freeman, right up to gut, has the first down. You see the difference with yes. Freeman running the football? Even though he's a young guy, even though he's not really a threat to break it for 50 right there, he's strong enough and physical enough to get the ball and take some football out of BYU. That's five carries for 31 yards for Freeman thus far. A true freshman out of Inglewood High School, the proud Sentinels, really putting on a show for himself and earning that starting spot in this football game. Inglewood High, incidentally, Barry, the best band I've ever seen in high school football. Well, we would play them every year in my alma mater, Peninsula High you, School, down in Southern California. And you would listen to the band. Oh, they're the greatest. This time, Freeman, nothing to do. It's going to lose a yard. They always had. Whatever hit it was, they'd learn it. You know, I mean, they always had the top 40 down. And the, the band, they had more band members than, than they did people in the crowd. And that's not because the crowd was small at Inglewood High School in Southern California. That's because the band was giant. And white tubas, I remember. Ooh, beautiful. I just got spoiled by doing games in the SWAC. Well, that'll do it. Bands, something special. Bands are more important than the team. Well, that's very true. Not that the teams aren't important, but the bands, big time. I'll tell you a story in a minute. Short drop by Locker, a quick hitch, and drive to be a lateral. And I think BYU's going to have this. Let's see. The officials are saying no. But I'll tell you what, that was as close as it gets to being a lateral. And not a heads up play by DeAndre Goodwin. They call that a smoke route. You just turn and catch it. Matt Bauman ends up with the football. But it looks like that ball was just inching forward. Boy, an inching is the operable word. Now, you're talking about the bands and the swack. Al Adels, of course, who was a coach of the Golden State Warriors, played at uh, North Carolina A&T, played basketball. The only reason he played basketball is he couldn't make the band. <laughs> I saw the movie Drumline. It's inspiring. Yeah. Locker throws, and there's one he'd like to have back. Three BYU Cougars around there, and Locker put it on one hop to Alvin Logan. Tafuna, Bauman, all around the ball. And Washington's going to be frustrated there. They had some good luck. They got the fumble with the touchback. They started to move the ball. They needed to capitalize a little bit more on that turnover. Sure, they got a first down, but they needed to capitalize a little bit better. Two first downs, but. Not good enough. So Bauman will come on to punt it. He's been a real weapon. 64 and 58 yards his last two. This one not as good. Reed White runs up, fair catch, makes it at the 16-yard line. So that's where the Cougars will start. 8-10, and it's a Cougar team that easily could use up that time for points on the board. We're tied at 21. We're coming back. We welcome you back. Eight minutes, 10 seconds remaining to be played in this football game. The Washington Huskies 21, BYU Cougars 21. Shadows now coming just about across a third of Husky Stadium here. And that, that could be a factor coming out of the shadow and into the sun for a receiver. Or vice versa. Yeah. So Max Hall will go from under center on first down. Play fake. Now Hall comes back across the field, and the catch is made by Unga. And Unga stays on his feet and gets it ahead to the 30-yard line. And this guy just leaving a trail of bodies behind him. Well, you see the fantastic feet and physicality of Harvey Unga. And he has had himself quite a ball game thus far, really expressing himself in the pass and in the run game, breaking tackles all over the place, making Washington defenders Look kind of silly, and it's the feet, it's the forward lean, it's the patience, it's the physicality. His dad, Jackson Munga, was a BYU running back in the early 80s. 
kid's a star. This is Dr. Puna this time. Dr. Puna scored a touchdown on his only other carry, and he gets four this time. Yeah, the other thing that Max Hall did that I thought was very good on that last pass reception by Unga is that Unga was probably his third receiver. He checked down really nicely. He moves across the field with his brain in a very impressive way. All that being said, Jake Locker just had a great opportunity to lead his team down the field in the fourth quarter against the ranked team and go ahead. And now Max Hall's got the rank. Quick screen to Reed, and Reed will have the first down, stays on his feet, gets to about the 47-yard line. And again, that's a different look. BYU knows what they're doing right now, and their offense is really fun to watch. They've gone undefeated in the Mountain West Conference the last two seasons, 16-0. These guys know they have to win their two Pac-10 games. This one versus Washington, where they have a great opportunity right now, and UCLA in Provo next week. Mark this at the 43-yard line, Bronco Mendenhall. You can see what he's done in September. Not anything to be too proud of, but boy, once this team gets rolling, they're pretty darn good. Well, they got three UCLA games in 53 weeks in three stadiums. Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Provo, Utah. That'll be the rubber match next Saturday. There's Unga again. Unga will get it across the 45, about the 46, will pick up three. Yeah, Bronco, when we spoke with him yesterday, he, he realistically feels that his team has to run the table to get into the BCS. And they have three games, which we'll tell you about in a moment. I want to tell you first, though, that First Down Markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football, Overstock.com at home. With the O. Thank you. Play fake this time, and Hall throws underneath. Pitta makes the catch, checks a tackle, 40, 35, 30, inside the 30-yard line in Washington Territory. Gain of 24. Tripper Johnson, the guy that recovered that fumble, the big hero from the last possession, is the one that missed that tackle on Dennis Pitta. Dennis Pitta just catching that flat route. He's been there all afternoon. Covers up that ball like a champion. Nate Williams ends up making that tackle. Just efficient, ball security. Always in the right place, this BYU offense. Really impressive to watch. Out of the gun once again. Hall, with all day to throw. It throws underneath. Reed makes the catch. Doesn't get much, but he'll take it. Gain of about four. Nate Williams on a stop. Just to complete that thought, Bronco feels they do have to run the table, and that this is one of those games they need to win. Another, of course, is next week at home with UCLA. And the last one is against another Mountain West Conference powerhouse, Utah, who did nothing more than go into Ann Arbor and beat Michigan last week. It's dangerous talk, though. It's dangerous talk, Barry. It's like you're living in a police state when you start talking about going undefeated, especially early in the season. you got to take it one game at a time, but BYU knows what they have to do to get in. Runga again. And this time he cannot get out of the grasp of Donald Butler. Nice job by the middle backer of the Huskies. The Huskies are starting to figure out some patience and tackling Lunga. You got to stay up, you got to tackle big, and you got to get a hold of that jersey. People don't use their fingers enough in the tackling world. You got to dig those fingers in like you're like you're grabbing a Thanksgiving turkey and just want to wreck somebody's Thanksgiving. You just stick your fingers in their turkey and shake it around. That's what you have to do when you tackle Lunga. Otherwise, he's going to slip away because he's so powerful. It's a big turkey, I'll tell you that. Yeah, indeed. Third down and three. All going to throw for it. There's that slant again, and Reed takes a big shot, holds out of the football on a first down for BYU at the 15 yard line. Really impressed with Max Hall and the precision passing. Look at Reed running a nice slant, good defense by Forrester. Nice hit by Tripper Johnson, trying to knock that ball loose. But such a perfect pass by Max Hall, and a lot of courage by Reed to go in there and make that play on third and short. I'll say. Clock's ticking. Big numbers, as you see once again, from Max Hall. Hall on the gun, juggles the snap. Now he throws wide open, pin up. Touchdown, Cougar. Very difficult series for Tripper Johnson. That time beat by Pitta. Pitta catches and runs like former BYU star Todd Christensen. He was an all-pro tight end, but actually played running back 
in college. This guy knows where he should be. He's a tight end all the way through. And that's exactly what you want from your tight end. Standing strong, making the catch, taking the hit, holding on to the ball, ball security, good routes, efficient. Say it over and over again, but that's what this offense is. Hit a cut 11 balls for 213 yards last week against Northern Iowa. He's got 10 catches today for 148 yards. That one for 15, and the touchdown that puts his team ahead. Big star. All these guys, they have a lot of stars on offense. Unga, Pitta, and Max Hall. Those three are fantastic. Good football team, and they've taken the lead here at Husky Stadium. Three minutes, 31 seconds left. We'll be back. College Football Saturday is presented by Acura. Acura, advance. And brought to you in part by Best Buy. You, happier. And by Holiday Inn Express. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. I think I just found our way home. It's got pontoons on it. <laughs> Here's Richardson off the short kick. And Richardson will be down at the 24-yard line. So now the onus falls on the Washington Huskies. Now we talked earlier in the game, the old hats off to the BYU offense. These three guys, first of all, Harvey Unga, power and patience. Talk about another patient guy, Max Hall, the quarterback. He's been on point in his whole career, pretty much, but all afternoon, no question. And Dennis Pitta, the star tight end, racking up Heisman-like numbers in the first couple games. These guys have not disappointed on the road in a Pac-10 stadium, but this is a season-defining drive right now. I know it's early, but a season-defining drive for Jake Locker and his Washington Huskies. And they have not done well in the fourth quarter. We'll tell you about that. Locker going for the whole ball game here, and he overthrows Goodwin, who's open by three steps. That's the second one he missed. He missed one in the first quarter. Deep passing accuracy has always been a problem for Jake Locker. And it rears its head once again here in the fourth quarter. They went for the home run. Really good call by Tim Lopano, the offensive coordinator. It's his fourth year with the Huskies and Ty Willingham. Perfect call, perfect time, perfect receiver, perfect defense. Not a perfect throw. Now 317, last second down to 10. Locker straight back. All day, dumps it off underneath for Middleton. And he's going to get about five. It's about the 29-yard line. UW has been outscored the last four fourth quarters that they've played. They have been outscored 58 to seven. It's something Ty Willingham talked to us about. They have not been able to finish well, and that's why this very drive means everything to Ty Willingham. And just what these people are going to be throwing at him during the week before Oklahoma comes in here to Husky Stadium. They've got to show up here. Bunch formation to the right side. Now they send Poke out further to the right. Walker throws underneath and Middleton, a tough catch for the first down across the 35. Right, Time is not really a factor here Come quite on, yet. 229 remaining in the ball game. Middleton comes off slowly. Remember he tweaked the knee earlier in the game. He's really one of these rising guys at the University of Washington. And whatever Ty Willingham's future is here, and you'd hope that they can pull it together, especially with such a fantastic quarterback in Jake Locker, they have some young guys that look like they're going to be pretty special in the future. Locker again has all day. Now he throws wide open. He's good, but he dropped the ball. was Goodwin wide open for a first down and more. He might have been wide open for a touchdown. Goodwin has great speed. We've seen it. He catches that ball and turns up field right at that sideline. I'm not sure if he doesn't take it into the end zone. And that's part of the frustration of when things aren't clicking perfectly. You have a guy wide open, you miss him. You have a guy wide open, you hit him perfectly, and it goes right off his hands. There you see it. Yep, they've just not been able to get that one big play. Second down and 10. Locker again straight back again with time. He throws and too tall intended for Polk. And the dogs just can't get it right right now. Well Jake Locker's walking toward the sideline. I'm not sure if the dogs don't just have to go for it here. 
And I believe they will. They have to go for it. You can't get it back. It's third down. I'm sorry. But I think you're right. Should they get the got to go down. for it with a guy like Unga out there? He's going to run that clock out. Third and ten. This is it. Straight back locker. Four man rush. He's got time. Now he rolls out. Now he throws across his body. Too tall. Wide open. Curse. That's a tough pass to throw, I must say, but. He's had people wide open. He's missed three of them. He got Goodwin. Goodwin dropped it. Now it's fourth down. Now the dogs have to go for it. You knew something, didn't you? Well, I'd like to act like I did. <laughs> I think I got caught when he was changing the marker. So here it is for the Huskies. 147 left, they trail by seven, fourth down, they need 10. And they've had every opportunity on this drive. This is more about what the Huskies haven't done than what the Cougars have. Walker's in trouble, he's gonna run, he'll get the first down. And it goes down at mid two. That's a problem solver. Yeah, do it. That's a new set of downs for Jake Locker. He could do that on a lot of plays when they spread the field and drop him back, and that middle opens up. Even though his hamstrings hurt and he's not as fast as he looked last year, he still has an incredible first step going up the field, and that'll get you 10 yards every time. The ball short of midfield. Quick one this time, and the ball catch is made by Polk, who steps out of bounds after a gain of about eight. Every down is life for the University of Washington when they have a guy like Jake Locker. Every snap he takes, great things can happen. We've seen him very inconsistent in this drive in particular. Missing a lot of throws, but his teammates have not helped him out. Goodwin dropped one, Locker did it with his legs. Then they hit the quick out. Pretty good looking right now for the University of Washington as they're well past the 50. And significantly, BYU not getting any kind of push on Locker. Now they've not done anything fancy, coming with a four-man rush almost every snap. This time a busted play and Locker may get the, enough for the first down. It will depend on the spot. I think they're going to say he's got enough for the first down. Looked like Jake opened up there and thought he was going to fake it or pitch it to David Freeman. Freeman, just a true freshman out there, didn't quite know what to do in that situation. And because Jake Locker is the quarterback, he's able just to kind of duck out and get a couple yards. But unhappy coaching staff on the sideline there for the University of Washington with the mistakes on this their most important drive of the season thus far. And it is enough for the first down. It kind of misspotted it the first time. And then the linesman said, no, no, it's over here. And they moved it up to where it is a first down for the Huskies. The ball at the 41 yard line. 116 remaining clock still not really a factor although it is running now of course. Consider hurry a little bit. Somebody might have jumped. It might be a freebie. Rocker going to try to get it out of there. Bumps into his own man. Now he throws. Polk makes a catch. Checks a tackler. And a great job to hold on. That might have been a touchdown were it not for the play of David Tafuna. Tafuna looked like he got shook, like you said. But he did hold on to the jersey of Polk, who's a jittery, smaller, scat back perimeter type of guy. Locker showing some real creativity there, dumping that ball off. Jay coming all the way back around the backside, runs into his offensive lineman, and then just flips it out there for Polk. And it looks like UW has figured out some of the things that were ailing them earlier in this drive, moving down the field pretty well. 54 seconds remaining. UW still with two timeouts remaining. Ball will be at the 29 yard line. BYU, of course, came in here with the longest active winning streak in the nation at 11. Georgia, who's winning today, right now at 8. USC with a bye this week. Play Ohio State next week at 6. Well, that fourth and 10 play. Might end up being something pretty special when you look back on this football game as Jake Locker brought back, saw a hole, and ran for the first down. As the field gets shorter, they're not going to be able to stretch out and let Locker really open it up with his legs. This BYU defense is going to kind of crunch down because 
They don't have as much field to cover, very simply. But I believe that the Huskies still have to continue to try to go downfield because good things happen when they try to go downfield. Either Walker hits one of the receivers or he can take off run and let him make a play with his legs. Can't think about saving him right now. Ball's at the 29-yard line. Who set it down? It's first down. This time to come with a blitz. It's picked up, and Walker lost the football. The ball is loose. It is picked up. And then I think maybe lost, and the Huskies may get this back, and if they do, it'll be a new set of downs. Now a flag is down. There's a flag down. I'm not sure the whistle didn't blow because there was an official signaling incomplete pass. Wall guys were scrambling for the football. Potential grounding offense. Boldly spotted at the spot of the pass. Second down. Oh, that's interesting. One of the few times that the Cougars blitzed was this time, and yeah, I guess that is the right call. Wasn't outside the tackle box. Some shovel pass. To whom I don't know. He was he was up when it happened. So that is a pass, and that is intentional grounding because it didn't look like Locker got outside that tackle box. He was close. And it's not renewable. It will back the Huskies up. Costly. All the way back to the 38-yard line. It'll be second down, a whole bunch. Second and 19. Locker again shakes trouble. Now he throws, and Goodwin makes the catch for a first down if he was in bounds, and I think they're going to say he was. First down, Husky. Gain of 20. And again, that's Jake Locker. Looks like a magician there. Dropping back. Huskies going downfield just like we were talking about. Good things happen when he's running around, and it's a nightmare for the BYU defense and all those guys watching on the sidelines with their teeth clenched. It looked like he dragged the foot. All those guys on that BYU sideline with their tooth clenched and <laughs> gnashing right now, watching Jake Locker run around, throw that ball downfield. I think we might have a look at this. The question is, did he have possession? And that's not the best angle to see it. It looks like they're going to give it to him, even if it's very, very close. The call on the field was catch, so it's going to be very difficult to overturn. Clock shows 36 seconds remaining. Here's another look, and again, not the best position to see it. This might be a little bit better. I think they'll give it to him. It looked like the right foot, he was trying to drag the left foot, but it looked like the right foot was down anyway. Yeah. Yep, I think First down. And that is the right call being given to you by Larry Farina, the referee. So the ball will be at the 18-yard line with a new set of downs, 36 seconds remaining in the game. Huskies trying to punch it in and with the extra point, tie the game here. Bronco Mendenhall hoping for all the world they don't. On this drive, three overthrows, a drop, a fourth down conversion, an intentional grounding call, and a sack, and yet Locker has his team in position. That one's a little under throw, and Locker hit right as he threw. In this situation, incomplete pass is not bad, especially on first down. It stops the clock. Barry Washington was 2-0 last season with wins at Syracuse. Then here at Boise State, there you see Locker taking a hit. You expect the Cougars to start bringing some pressure. In game three, the Dogs stayed with Ohio State well into the third quarter before losing. And then last year, the season spouted away. This year, the Dogs are trying to avoid an 0-2 start with Oklahoma looming. Colby Kloss was about to put the hit on Locker. This is the 14th play of the drive, low snap. Now Locker steps up, he's got room, he's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he'll be down at the three-yard line. I'm sure the dogs will call a timeout here. They gotta get right up on the ball if they're not gonna call a timeout. Clock is gonna start again, just 23 it seconds. It's already started, now down to 20 seconds. And the clock is still moving, and they have a timeout. Now they take it. They burned a lot of time. Big mistake. Big mistake, Barry. 
If they were going to call the timeout, it needed to be due. It needed to be done absolutely when Locker went down and got up. But that's another problem with having a physical quarterback that takes off and runs the football. You know, there's a couple seconds after you get tackled when you're on the ground that you don't really know what's going on. That's just the world of football. Locker's got to pop up and call that timeout. Instead, he's checking his wristband. He's looking around. But just a really tough order, really tough order for a quarterback that that's that that is that physical that runs the ball like a running back. He's got to get up and all of a sudden run the team and make decisions. Locker, three rushes on this drive for 30 yards. And he has given and he has taken away and he's done a little bit of everything on this drive. Bottom line is, he's got his team at the three yard line. And if you're the University of Washington or if you're one of their fans or you're on this team, whose hands do you want the ball in in this situation? I'm going to put it in number 10, I believe. Good choice. Thank you. I think. Lockers drops back to throw. Does throw. Dropped. Middleton had it in his hands. Great defensive job by Scott Johnson. Johnson's having a big game. Really gutsy call by Tim Lapano at the University of Washington offensive coordinator. Going after Scott Johnson, who's had a good game with a true freshman tight end. Locker throws it perfectly. Johnson played the ball perfectly. Middleton, both hands on the ball, looked like he had it for a moment, and then it squirts out. Second out, 11 seconds. Locker drops back, goes to the other side this time, and Goodman. Now there's eight seconds. That was a catchable ball. Goodwin did not turn in time. I'm not sure I like these different fade calls. The first one, okay. You get the tight end involved. Middleton, just a freshman, been banged up in this game, but had a good chance to catch that ball. I want to just sprint out and let Locker do his thing with the ball in his hand with his legs moving. This is the 17th play of this drive. Husky still do have a timeout. There's eight seconds left. They got two more chances. They spread the field this time. Come to the blitz up the middle. Locker's going to keep it. He's going to fight his way into the end zone for Washington. Touchdown. And a late flag for celebration. That's a costly flag. I'm not really sure. Didn't look like Locker was self-aggrandizing. It looked like he was celebrating with his teammates. I'm not very sure I agree with that flag at all. I hate that call to begin with. I, I could see it if players come off the bench to celebrate. Then it makes sense to me. If you're celebrating with excitement with your teammates, that is a bad call. No question about it. What a run. Unsportsmanlike conduct on number 10 of the offense. Celebration after the play. 15-yard penalty on the try. You know, you make a play for your team. You have a very difficult drive. That was the 18th play. And you get a penalty like that when you're excited. What a what a run that showed great desire and want to. I guess they're saying he kind of spiked it behind his head. I disagree. I really disagree with that call. BYU will call a timeout with two seconds left. Now, this is no gimme here. This ball will Not be now. snapped at the... 18 yard line it makes it a 35 yard extra point try. Ryan Perkins one for one versus Oregon 35 yard field goal. Now I, I'm sorry I just do not agree I know it's a point of emphasis I know it's a rule I know the official you can't say that it's the wrong call by the official you can only say it's the wrong judgment. I guess they're saying that he kind of spiked it behind his head, but he's just kind of getting rid of the ball, and e eager to celebrate with his teammates, and that's what they tell you. You practice that when you score in, in practice. They say, celebrate with your teammates. Don't self-aggrandize. That's exactly what Locker did. Exactly. Now here's the game. Wasn't in anybody's face now. A 35-yard extra point try by Ryan Perkins to take it to overtime. It's blocked. And that is purely in the hands of the officials. Now there's a flag for BYU. There's two seconds left. That's excessive celebration. They ran out on the field with two seconds left. The clock doesn't run on a PAT try. So BYU's going to get excessive celebration, but it's not going to matter. And 
This is one that you could blame on the officials. I, I really believe that we would have had an overtime game had they not thrown that flag Denver, on Jake Locker. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the BYU bench. 15-yard penalty on the kickoff. Now, as we said, when you come off the bench, I can see it. But absolutely did not see it with, it with that. If it was in somebody's face, if he spiked the ball, and there was an opponent standing there or anything like that, then yes. BYU played a great game here. Coming through, they had to block this kick to end the game. That's exactly what they did. Great push up the middle, great push on the edges. The UW PAT team collapsed completely. Looked like Perkins' foot slipped a little bit, but that kick was up. It looked like a pretty strong kick, just well played. And you see the disappointment on the face of Jake Locker. Ty Willingham has got to be devastated by this. He should be. University of Washington team had not performed well in the fourth quarter. In this game, in the fourth quarter, they force a big turnover. Then they drive to tie it. They're pushing it to overtime in their stadium against a fantastic BYU team that's riding the nation's longest winning streak. They push, they push, they drive. There's Juan Garcia disappointed and angry, barking at his teammates. They all celebrate a touchdown. Looked pretty classy to me. And he gets a celebration penalty that backs him up on the PAT and they get blocked. Yeah. Here's Locker's run. You're going to see great desire here, Barry. I mean, this is a great run. He should have gone down five yards before that. And he didn't even spike the ball. But he threw it back over his shoulder. I, I, I'm sorry. I just absolutely disagree with that. 100% disagree with it. I do not feel that call should be made at that point. I agree completely. I don't think that call should be made at any point, to tell you the truth. They try the onside kick, and the onside kick is good. But the clock will run out. So it doesn't matter. And BYU's going to win this game. There's another flag down here. Well, let's see. Ty Willingham may be saying that his team should have one more play. The catch was made with time on the clock. The clock should not start until the catch is made. And it's not let BYU does not deserve to win this ball game, Barry. Offside, Washington. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. BYU does deserve to win this ball game. Offensively, they were the picture of consistency. Their quarterback, their tight end, their tailback, all big-time fantastic players. You just hate to see the game end like that. Yeah. This was a great game that was going to end in overtime. We were going to see heroics from Jake Locker and Max Hall, and we were cheated out of that because of that call. I think the fans were cheated out of it. I, th I, I agree with you. Let's take nothing against BYU. BYU played a tremendous football game. On the road, this is a tough place to play. No question about it. And it's a very good BYU football team. And yes, they did earn the victory. But I just hate to see the victory chalked up to the guy in a striped shirt. And that's exactly what happened. We had a chance to see something pretty cool with an overtime in this game. And the flag didn't help. So they'll kick it again, but it's a moot point. There's one second left. And that's all they can do is knock it out of the back of the end zone. Max Hall will have to take a knee. This crowd was treated to a very entertaining football game. People are shocked. People are shocked here in Husky Stadium. And frankly, we're shocked too. Hate to see it end like that on a flag. So Hall takes the knee, that'll do it. BYU will extend its unbeaten streak to 12. Listen to the crowd, that's all the editorial you need. These boos are not so much for the players in the white jerseys. No, they had nothing to do with it. They played a great game. And they did what they had to do on the PAT and blocked it to ensure the victory. There's nothing wrong with that. And knowing Bronco Methanol, I'm quite sure what he's saying to Ty Williams, I hate to win it that way, great game. 
And it's not going to get any easier for the University of Washington. Oklahoma coming here to Husky Stadium a week from today. And they're going to have to collect themselves, collect their poise, lick their wounds, try to get over the frustration of this loss, and reappear. BYU doesn't have it a lot easier. They got UCLA going into Provo. All right, we're going out of the field now. John Jackson is with Bronco Mendenhall. JJ. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Thanks, Barry. And first of all, Coach, congratulations. What a great game. Your team played well today. Of course, the, the thing that's going to be talked about, unfortunately, is that last celebration by Jake Locker. What are your thoughts? You know, I think that the rules are the rules. And there was certainly plenty of penalties that could or could not have been called the entire day. And unfortunately, a game is decided uh, with a player celebrating because he made a great play. Uh, it is within the rules. And I give Coach Willingham and their uh, team a lot of credit. They battled very hard. Their quarterback, uh, Jake Locker, is an exceptional player with a ton of heart. And uh, I was just proud to be on the field with that guy today. He did an outstanding job. I love our team. Again, they made a play when they had to to win the game. Well, we talked at halftime that you said it's going to come down to execution. And your team ended up doing just enough of that to get the win. What are your thoughts on your team's performance? Mm, they, we made one more play, but we made that play in a critical situation. We certainly learned a lot about ourselves today, what we can improve, what we can improve. But what I don't do is ever doubt these players. Uh, when it comes down to it, they find a way to win, and that's why uh, they're having the success they are, and I'm fortunate to be able to coach them. And we talked about the streak of non-conference games. Oh, we'll get, we're done, Coach, thanks. Congratulations. Barry, back to you. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, J.J., and BYU doing what BYU does. They had almost 500 yards of offense. They were very effective on third downs. We'll come back, put a ribbon on this day after this. There's the final. BYU has now won 12 games in a row. They defeat the Washington Huskies here at Husky Stadium 28-27, to an ending that uh, was not so much in the hands of the players, and you hate to see that, but you've got to give it up for this BYU football team. They execute very well, and I think they could go a long way. Offensively, they're just as impressive as anybody we've seen this year or last year, to be honest. I mean, Missouri looked great last year on offense, but these guys have legitimate stars at tailback, legitimate star at tight end, and a legitimate star at quarterback in Max Hall. We've talked about all these guys, and they did perform at the highest level possibly, I think, in this game in a hostile environment. And this is a hostile environment. Washington, they've got to be disappointed about the way this one ended up. Yeah, I think so, too. And of course, uh, you know, we're, you and I are all Always been fans of Ty Willingham for all the good things he does and what a wonderful guy he is. He is, and uh, he deserved a little bit of a better fate here, at least to take this game to overtime. And, of course, the Sharks uh, continue to circle here at the University of Washington. Final score once more, the Cougars of BYU, 28. Huskies of Washington, 27. A wrap for us for Petros Papadakis, John Jackson.